So, um, I got a jumper for Christmas, um, but I found it kept picking up static electricity, so I took it back to the shop and exchanged it free of charge. I wish I'd invented the polo. I would have made a mint. I suffer from oh, kleptomania. Oh, now. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I suffer from kleptomania, but sometimes when it's really bad, I take something for it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Carol once asked me to stop impersonating a flamingo. Well, I had to put my foot down. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Someone oh. tried to sell me a coffin, and I thought to myself, you know what, that's the last thing I need. Anyway, hello everyone, and welcome to the Black Dog 160. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. I'm going to start putting in comedy laugh audience. Live, oh, God. Live <laughs> laughing <laughs> audience. I need feedback. I need, I need reaction. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Black Dog I promise to laugh next week. The Black Dog <laughs> podcast was filmed in front of an almost live all studio audience. Um, yes. Anyway, hello everyone. Um, uh, yes, welcome to Black Dog. And this week we will be seeing how everyone's week's been, and then we will be getting some feedback for last week's episode, which was. The uh, White Tiger. The White Tiger. Thank you very much, Jill. Oh, my brain was going completely blank there. And then after that, we'll be on to this week's movie, which is Darren's, which is? Yeah, Ready or Not. You're right. Yeah, I, I, I am. What was the film? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. You're I so am, funny. I am very funny. <laughs> Clown car. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, green room humour. Green room humour. Where will we be without it? Nobody gets it except us. Aren't we funny? Um, <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> but before we get to all of that, let's find out how everyone's week's been. And as ever, we'll start with you, Jim. How's it been, sir? Ah, uh, so... Uh, reasonably quiet. It's January, the end mm-hmm. of January. Yeah. And behold, there was much praying to the great God of staying in. <laughs> and not yeah. spending any more bloody money. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the land of Stoppertum near Window Still Bay. <laughs> oh, it, it's, yes, yeah. It's, just, uh, it's been an expensive month, put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because um, uh, Teresa's mum passed away in early December. Yeah. And uh, she's going to be going uh going over there to see her folks mm. and uh well partly i have to say over to look after the dog but uh mm. uh the price of airline prices these fucking days mm-hmm. i thought I'd be, i thought i was buying the plane <laughs> <laughs> yeah jesus christ yeah. trips mean, to australia are not the cheapest no they are not no. <laughs> it's kind of my eyes are still watering mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, mm. yes so that's uh, yes so for me, it might be a lot of staying in as well. <laughs> yeah, it's right. But, uh, uh, I don't mind really. But yeah. it's one of those things like it pisses me off. It's kind of can we just stop this price gouging now? I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure the pilots' wages haven't gone up like 200 percent since we last went. No, <laughs> like the tickets have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if and if and if the last last few uh, weeks of news reports about the planes is going uh, anywhere, it's uh, not like they're spending it on the uh, maintenance either, is it? Absolutely not. That's what gives it dry, drives me up the wall. Mm. Um, and as for the trains, fuck it. Oh, no. oh sharpness is no fear. Yep. Can I just say, Trans Pennine Express, mm-hmm. I have a problem with you. Mm-hmm. The trans bit, the Pennine bit, and in particular, the express bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, once upon a time, you could get a Trans Pennine Express mm-hmm. that went from uh, Darlington to mm-hmm. Manchester Airport. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of, sometimes you had to go and go from Darlington, York, and then straight, then you could go. Mm. Um, to Manchester Airport. It took about two and a half hours. It stopped at every place known to man in between. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it got there. Mm. When we went to book it for Teresa this time, um, five changes. Oh. Several of them, bus links. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I shopped around. The best I could do was three, three changes. And mm. when I looked at the itinerary, mm. there was one change that hadn't actually flagged up and mentioned. And it was a pretty fucking crucial one. 
Because <laughs> on the train, <laughs> you eventually get out of fucking on with several buses. Yeah. So actually deign to put you on a train. Yeah. Bear in mind, this, this used to be all one train, wasn't it? Door to door. Jeez. Right? It stops at Manchester, uh, Victoria. Mm-hmm. And then on the train, it said, make your way to Manchester Piccadilly. Which means make your way. Yeah. What? <laughs> you, you don't do anything here? John, Apparently no. not. And if you don't know Manchester, Victoria's mm. at one side of the city centre, mm. Piccadilly's yeah. right at the other. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking miles away. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, we booked a coach, <laughs> which just go from Darlington with a leg stretch at Leeds and mm. is uh, literally. Um, a third of the price and a third of the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like, my message to the railways is, fuck off and die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like your golden eagle to Mordor. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, honestly, I can see why the train drivers been on strike because it's kind of mm. what was. I mean, Manchester Airport is a fairly crucial destination. Most yeah. people are wanting to go there more yeah. than Manchester in some cases. And to fucking balls up the train that goes directly there, mm. it just beggars belief. Yeah. And it's going to, you know, where it once took like two and a bit hours, it was, yeah, it was getting like five, five and a half, six oh. hour trip. Jesus. <laughs> With a minimum of three changes, including a secret extra fourth change where somehow you've got to get across Manchester under your own steam. Wow. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off. Keep striking. Bring the whole thing to the ground and have, everyone, have all the board of directors shot and hung. Yeah. Because I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they're not running a train service. Oh, no. Damn right. Fuck Freedom them all. In. Yeah. Fuck them all. I'm still not I'm never the going by train fuck again. The man. No. I, tell you what, I couldn't believe how bad that, I mean, I couldn't believe the change in the service. In, no. Well, Unbelievable. That, well, that's the way it's always gone, isn't it? You know, these things get privatised, then they mm. become sort of like they have to earn infinite wealth, and so <laughs> therefore, you know, the, the money's not not increasing, but the the profits has got to increase. So therefore, money's got to come down for services. So you get this shrink, what they call in shrinkflation. Mm. You know, you're paying the same amount for less, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so therefore, our profits are looking better. See also Netflix <laughs> and wagon wheels and, as and well. Wagon wheels. Yeah, wagon wheels and Quality okay. Street and my Quality job Street. as well. And, and your job. Uh, so Freddos are not affected well, yeah. though. Freddos are uh, actually steady at the moment uh, on the market at thirty uh, p for a Freddo. Thirty p for a Freddo, um, really? Thirty p 30, for, for a Freddo. Yeah. Fuck off. They do say you can actually measure the state of a country's economy by the price of a Freddo. <laughs> so uh yeah we fucked <laughs> <laughs> fucking brexit <laughs> that's not what i voted for that's not what i voted for where's my blue where's my blue passport <laughs> i thought they were a quid now freddo's not not oh, for meant passports i will say no well and they're about 70 to 80 pounds for yes. a passport <laughs> I've, no, no, no they're, they're about Freddo's are still P. pretty competitive compared to the passports. <laughs> and you can just go in the shop and get one, not have to fuck on for about three months. And they're, the and, they're, and they're a damn sight more useful in you know internationally, a Freddo. Yeah. You can yeah. exchange Freddos. Nobody gives a shit about a British passport. No. no. Freddo's are useful. You've got a Freddo, but like got Freddo's. a friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so twenty five okay. P in the co op and Asda. What, Freddo? Yeah, Freddo, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm looking at a website with Freddo prices, and two, in, in 2000, they were 10 pence. Shit that, in hell. That I, know. I remember. 2005, <laughs> high or lower? Where, where do we want to go? They've gone higher. No, they yeah. are 10 pence still. Wow. Wow. Oh. 2010, where do we want where, where do Oof. we think we are? No, I think we're still. I think we're going to the twelve to fifteen pence. I go yeah. twelve. No, seventeen pence. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Now, what happened then? Well, hang on, hang Was on. A frog shortage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Which of frogs named Freddo? Is that it? Two thousand fifteen. Where do we think we are? Oh. <laughs> now that's got to be that's got to be the the sliding scale. Two thousand and fifteen. That was. Hold on, give me give me two seconds. I'm just going to switch mm. the Bloomberg channel on. 
and see if that ponytail <laughs> bloke is losing his fucking bonkers over the price. <laughs> the the Fredo Fredo exchange rate. Right. Oh mm. my god! No, it, it was twenty five pence. Mm-hmm. Twenty twenty, wow. it's saying thirty five pence. Twenty twenty five, they're predicting forty four pence, and twenty thirty, fifty three pence. Right, it's okay. I, end times, wow. my friend. I, I think it. at the moment, um, <laughs> oh. I do believe that they're about to go up by three or four pence because of the Suez Canal um, uh, <laughs> issue. Because everything apparently is affected by the Suez Canal, right? Okay, I've noticed this in the shops. <laughs> it's like, uh, what was it? Like, uh, fucking bread rolls have gone up from like, you know, a pound for six mm. uh, to one pound ten. Right? <laughs> Everything's got 10p. Mark up on it now because some people are doing their nut in the Suez Canal at the moment, mm. right? They're in a bit of a barney there. It's going so, a bit um, woo way in the yeah. Suez Canal, therefore. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, so um, mm. you know, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to it when Kim Jong Un looks badly at someone across a Burger King. Um, <laughs> the prices, yeah, he was prices not, he, of burger buns go up by eighty-seven quid. Exactly, he was not impressed by Rishi Sunak's uh, choice of burger Happy <laughs> Meal from McDonald's. So we're pulling everything up by fifteen p. Yes. Hmm. Well, the Suez Canal apparently isn't is in trouble because because there's no water there's no water in it or there's a very low tide. Isn't there a boat no. still stuck in it, like uh, <laughs> Austin Powers? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just going backwards, <laughs> forwards, backwards, trying to do the three-point turn, backwards, what? forwards. What? Why do I feel, why do I feel we we are the most ill-informed news podcast out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, around that area, um, these I think it's called the Houthi uh, launched uh, a major drone attack on a British and American warships. That's the Red Sea. Not is it Red Sea now? Oh, sorry. All right, it's a like, Red Sea crisis then. Okay. Like I say, like I say, we are the most all, ill-informed <laughs> news source in the entire breaking world. news. The sausage look like the same to Darren. Oh dear. Yeah. yeah well, it's got boats in it, in it. You know, <laughs> ducks we in it. That's all I need yeah. to know. There we go. <laughs> ducks we in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So over to our over to our financial and uh, international correspondent, Mr. Darren Barnard. How is the Suez Canal issue going on in the Red Sea? Uh, well, I'm looking out there. There's a couple of them paddle boats that tourists go in. I mean, there's a swan. Oh, there's a swan. There's a swan. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's an old condom floating in. The, oh no! Um, <laughs> one of those bastards with one of those motorized sailboats is pushing it around, getting yep. in the way of all the all the wildlife. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, <sighs> at least one, at least one tennis ball that's gone green on one side <laughs> is floating in it, <sighs> and a shoe, just a single shoe, <laughs> single shoe floating, floating in the water. Yeah, <laughs> where the other one is, we don't know. <laughs> and a, and a shopping trolley with only yep. three wheels. <laughs> <laughs> So other than that, how's your week, Jim? <laughs> uh, I think I've caused enough mayhem there. <laughs> right. Okay. Over to Elton. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Over, over to the yeah. Over to our um, domestic uh, domestic and foreign correspondent, uh, Elton McManus. How is how's the uh, how's the news out there, man? Oh, yeah, it's it's pretty good over here at the moment. I I have one thing to moan about. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I will moan about something in the green room later on. Don't worry. Uh, okay. But uh, I, I am now un, unbungoed on the, <laughs> the episodes I was doing. <laughs> so myself and Andy started okay. doing a Masters of the Air podcast about this Apple Plus program, or basically Band of Brothers in the Air Where's, in, in is, aeroplanes. Is just one thing: is is Castle Grey Skull looking good? No, it's not <laughs> Masters of the Universe. It's Masters of the Air. Okay, fair enough. Go on, carry on. So it's it's all based around the one uh, hundredth squadron. I think it's one hundredth mm. squadron. Mm. You'll, you'll you'll get what I'm on about in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's the B seventeens, fl- the American Air Force flying over and dropping bombs yep. in in Germany, Nazi Germany. Yeah. And um. It's going very. I'm enjoying the show. I think it looks great. Mm-hmm. We we've done three episodes so far. Uh, we did Memphis Bell and part one and part two of the actual program. 
Mm-hmm. And in each one, at the very beginning, we said, look, we're not we're not veterans. We're not pilots. We mm. weren't in World War II. We've never fought in combat. We just enjoy this stuff. We're reviewing mm-hmm. a TV show. Yeah, you, yeah. That's, and, mm. and, <laughs> you, know, you know what Apple podcast reviews are like? Yep. And all all the World War Two nerds have come out, haven't they? Actually, they have not done any research whatsoever. One mm. star review, blah 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 blah. <laughs> but we've told you we're just reviewing a show. We're mm. just well, actually, you want this thing wrong? <laughs> Fuck off. We're yep. just reviewing a TV show and giving our views on it. That is it. Actually, Adolf was his middle name. Um, his first name was Gerald. I think you'll find quite clearly that Austin Butler is only about 24, therefore he could not be in World War II because it was at least 70 years ago before he was born. Thank yeah. you. Did you know his mother had made him a scarf and he called it Nittler? <laughs> <laughs> Nittler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nittler. you know, go I'm back to the masters of it. Like, I've, I have this image in my head now of fabulous powers revealed to me yeah. the day I stood in Terminal 12 at the baggage claim <laughs> and held aloft my mighty rucksack <laughs> and, and said, I have the power. Um, yeah, wow, okay, I, it's so frustrating. It, it is to the point where I'm like. What the fuck am I doing this for? It's nerds, man. It's nerds. That's what it is. That's nerds. why that's why we have such a fantastic audience because nobody can say that we don't know anything because we say we don't know anything. Exactly. <laughs> Beaten to it. We roll with it, man. We just we roll with we it. claim it. We own it. That. <clears throat> that's why that's why it always makes me laugh that the one one star review that we got the first ever one star review we got which actually had a comment on it was always this sounds like four guys just having a chat. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You've yeah. hit the nail on the head there, Sonny. <laughs> oh, Congre- we're, we're supposed to turn the stars black, not white. Oh, sorry. It was supposed to be a, a four out of five. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Well done. Yeah. Well, there you go. So what is the podcast actually called that you're going to abandon ship and dive out the window <laughs> soon? <laughs> so the, the program is called Masters of the Air. Mm-hmm. And somehow, no one else took up Masters of the, the, the Air podcast. So I grabbed that mm. and I'm using it and running with it. So, it's, yeah. yeah, nice. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. well, until until um, HBO or Apple come along and just buy it off you regardless. Oh, yes. No, they, look, there's nothing to buy. Jeez, it's just two idiots talking about planes it's like the Grand Prix podcast where I'm just talking about cars going around in circles and nerds just go, actually, you got this fact wrong. I fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. But the problem is you you, you two you two are absolutely <laughs> absolutely putting your head in the head in the lion's mouth and slapping its love spuds with a wet towel. You're put you found the two most most hardcore fucking yep. subjects to f- yeah. with the most hardcore un- unamused nerds in the universe yeah. and literally went all right we're going to review this thing and then not bring up something that someone has obsessed over for the last 82 years we we had the so, same thing Elton. on the the band of brothers one as well the, the one that we did and i yep. love that show to pieces mm. and yet they all all jump on on board you and just destroy you and like, oh, do you know what we're just doing this for fun we're mm. doing this for free it, mm. it's all when's free doctor content who podcast coming out when's the what when's the doctor who podcast coming out i can't <laughs> wait for that that's well, gonna be man. great Darren, wow. Darren, i was gonna ask you the would great you like... railways of the year <laughs> yeah <laughs> darren i was gonna ask believe you, you having worked in a library where we were cataloging an awful lot of um, pictures of like old trains, the <laughs> railway nerds. Oh man! Oh yeah! yeah. Oh dear! That's some good shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> picky. Yeah. <laughs> Darren, I was going to ask you did Did you want to do a Millwall podcast with me? Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do that shit, shall we? I know fuck all about football, but yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> call what it the hell. Call it Millwall. 
call it the Orange Garden Furniture Podcast because that was what everyone had yeah. after a certain football match when they started throwing it out of the stand. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 get right on one with that one, Elton. Let's do it, man. I okay. think I think I'm going to do an authoritative um, Star Trek podcast called "All the Ships That Ever Existed Signed Lee," and, yeah. then, and that will not cause any grief at all and i will create histories for all the pod for all the spaceships with all the serial numbers and everything will be as accurate as i can make it <laughs> see i'd rather do the mill wall one actually i think there's less hate there you know what i've got an idea um, i know elton has been doing uh celebrity illustrations recently, mm. but i think i think you and elton should join forces and uh as you're doing this podcast about every ship in Star Trek, I think Elton should draw the plans for each of these <laughs> ships. Oh, fucking right? hell. Yeah, I think, just do like, a saucer. Yeah, just constantly do a saucer. Just like a circle with a bit that comes down, joins a long tube thing. <laughs> and just, you know, just do the same picture every week, but at a different angle. Yes. You know? There's the different you... shade of grey. Yeah. yeah, there's the USS Burnt Ash. It has the license number NCC one seven zero one. Then what there is is the USS House, which has yes. the license plate NCC one seven zero one. I did a then... bit of fan fiction fourteen years ago. I created a shift, and I'm saying it is now canon. Yes, because I saw something that may have looked like it in the shape of an ashtray on Jean-Luc Picard's sofa in that 14th episode of the show Picard. Yeah, Therefore, I... because I think it looks like my ship, it is my ship. Actually, actually, I've just suddenly thought, this is this is on-air production. We could do one <laughs> called Trollcast. <laughs> oh, literally, yes. Literally, we have to talk for 45 minutes on a subject we have literally no idea about. Hang on, that's oh, Shonky Lab. Man. No, no, but but I'm talking. No, but I'm talking about with authority. You yeah. literally pick a subject which only has you can only speak authoritatively. Not not. Oh, what do you think this means? Or what's that all about? Or what? Oh, <laughs> it's just you like, totally yeah. make up bullshit about it. Yes, yeah. can you? Yeah, the troll cast. Yeah. Or yeah. you could actually, you know, you could do something like, "Would I lie to you?" The uh, the quiz show. Do you no, actually no, know no, 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 about it, no. or is it all bullshit? No, no, we 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 tried that once. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go down to well. It didn't last very long. Let's put it away. Um, right. Yeah. The, yeah. The the real official. Yeah. The real official like listings cast. Yeah. Troll. There you go. <laughs> the real official, the real official, like listings are cast. There you go. That okay, so we can say like, um, yeah, welcome know, to Troll, Deep Space Nine, um, mm. a show that was created after Elton John and Joe Pasquale spent a night on the tiles and both ended up at a kebab shop uh, <laughs> east side of Dartford. Yeah, exactly. That was where the plan to make the show Deep Space Nine was actually hatched <laughs> yes exactly from there yeah had nothing to do with babylon 5 at all okay no 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 that's what you got to do you just got to no you got to make it close you got to start a ra- oh. proper row you got to literally say so they made babylon 5 and then 10 years later they made deep space 9 which was a complete rip off and just that that's <laughs> it that's all you got to say just yeah, that, they've... and the sound of explosions from distance would almost light up the sky. I think, or you could say um, it wasn't originally going to be called uh, Deep Space Nine. Apparently, it was going to be called Star Trek: Rabalon Skive. Um... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all, yeah. It was what is little? What is little known is that the Enterprise D was actually supposed to be called the Enterprise Double D because of those two big boobies that hang off the side. <laughs> two big saucers. Two big saucers. Yeah, Massive exactly. saucers. Massive yes. saucers. With arthritis. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> in the fingers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The official BJ and the Bear podcast. <laughs> Huge tracks of land. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, sorry, apart from that, Elton, you've done your Masters of the Universe uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's about it. The rest of it is just me moaning about work and uh, 
I have not got the energy mm. yeah. to do that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, I will wise. move on. Okay. Okay. Well, in which case, we'll move to you, Dal. How's it, how's it been for you, sir? Oh, it's actually been uh, a really good week this week. Mm-hmm. I've, um, yeah, I've uh, had some really good things happen. There's one or two things I can't actually talk about yet. Are you on Bongo as well? No, no, I wasn't. No, no, not on Bongo. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, things is a uh, things is looking up uh, around yeah. here. Yeah. Yes. And not you because mean you've got a skylight? Like, I've not shrunk or anything like that. <laughs> right. Uh, but there you go. <laughs> But uh, let's see what what did I what did I did done do this week? Well, uh, mm-hmm. this week it was Ree's birthday. Yes. Um. So uh, you know, much celebration was mm-hmm. had there, yeah, and much uh, rejoicing, Ree. much rejoicing, much cake baking, and much eating of said cake. Mm-hmm. Um, going out for dinner and stuff like that. It was a uh, just generally a lovely, lovely uh, day off from work. I've mm-hmm. got to say, cool. Uh, last Friday, so it was very very nice. Um, and uh, let's see, what else have I done this week? Uh, right, okay. Uh, there's a there's a game out at the moment mm-hmm. that's uh, causing a little bit of side eye, and I think it's coming from Nintendo. This or oh, it fucking well should be oh, right. Oh, you're on the Pal World thing. Aren't yep, you? yep. It's a game called Pal World. Okay. Pal now, World. for anybody that doesn't know what Pal World is, it's <laughs> it's kind of like imagine somebody took Pokemon. And kind of viewed it through one of those fucking crazy fairground mirrors, right? Yeah. Okay, it's it's so close to ripping it, ripping off everything <laughs> in Pokemon. It's just fucking stupid. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a clue, right? Okay, um, uh, one of the pals, which are the little creatures that you can capture in these spherical objects, um, is called Spark. <laughs> right? Okay, now. Right. So, considering... Oh, my God! Are you looking at it? Yes! Yeah, <laughs> considering that, you know, the Nintendo version of it um, mm-hmm. being, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Pikachu, right? Mm-hmm. This thing, this thing called Spark, <laughs> is Pikachu in all the fact that it's got a square head, and that is the only difference. It's yellow, <laughs> it's got black stripes on it, and it's got a lightning stripe for a fucking tail. It's Pokemon Trace. My God. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Pokemon done on Wish, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> although I've got to say, I'm actually quite enjoying it. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying it. Um, it's not a bad little game. It's not the best. I don't know why people are losing their shit over it, apart from the fact that you do know that this is actually Pokemon, do you? Um, apart one from star. that. One star, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, apart from that, it's actually not a bad little game. Mm. You know, you get to go around, do some adventuring, do battling. Um, you know, once you learn how to use these creatures, then it does actually improve the game <clears throat> vastly mm-hmm. uh, in battle. So, um, do you know yeah. what? I'm mm. surprised this hasn't happened way before. Well, I think it has. It's like, you know, just about any uh, game that features creatures in it that look a little bit sort of anime. Mm. You know, there's there's loads of them out there. Oh, are there? Okay. Yeah, tons of it. So, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is one that's a bit more brazen about the fact that... And they, it's just like they've given up trying, you know? Mm. I've just... <laughs> I don't know why they just didn't call it Monopoke or something like that, you know, <laughs> by, bin te- by Bintendo, you know. Pokemon. Pike- bin- Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Ah, you see, they're all dressed in Burberry. Yes, each and every single one. Nikachu. Nikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Chavazard. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Ah, mm. it's all good family entertainment. It really is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check it out, and they've got uh, they've got a, like a Microsoft, um, g- uh, uh, you know, uh, account, then you could get that free on the. Uh, oh, what's their fucking system called? It's a long time since I've fucking well played Xbox. A Game I Pass. Had... Yeah, Game Pass. That's it. Yeah. So if you've got Game Pass, you can get it for free on there. Give it a try. See what you think. Right. So that is that. Uh, right, what else have I done this week? Um, oh, I've been listening to the Sandman audio. Mm-hmm. The audio plays for that 
Um, I'm halfway through season two mm-hmm. of that at the moment. I'm fucking loving it. I didn't really sit and listen to it properly before, Amber. I've really got into it now. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, highly recommend that. Cool. And the last thing I did this week was I mm-hmm. uh, went to the cinema. We re went to the cinema. Yeah. <coughs> and we went to see um, Emma Stone's porn movie. Or uh, <laughs> should we call it Poor <laughs> Things? Porn yeah. Things. Porn Things. Porn <laughs> Things. I, I am not fucking joking. It's. Um, it's quite sort of like, oh, hello. She's a, uh, yes, there we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Yep. Uh, it's gone from being sort of like totally fully clothed to, ah, oh, shagging. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. Um, now, I've got to say, the stuff that it, you know, quite a bit of the stuff it tries to put across about freedom and stuff mm. like this. Uh, you know, Barbie kind of did that, uh, but with a lot less shagging. Um, and I've got to say, <laughs> when we were sat there watching it, we felt like we'd been in the cinema for about a fucking week watching the film. It's only two and a half hours long, but it felt like two and a half, you know, two and a half fucking weeks. That's because the time slowed down. Uh, <laughs> time yeah. slowed down for you as you were sitting there going, oh, oh, I shouldn't be sitting here. Exactly. See, especially not with my cock out. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> in the theater. That's so rather it, big buckets of popcorn. It, it was it was quite funny watching, uh, seeing how many people suddenly had to dash off to the loo um, mm. uh, during certain scenes. You know, so there's a lot of people going to the toilet. There must be a lot of bloody weak bladders in this area. Mm. Yes, of course there are. Yes, yes, that's it. Yes, weak bladders, weak bladders. Lots of lots of very weak bladders. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know if I can recommend it. it it's an it's an all right film, you know. There's some, there's a lot of good stuff in it. Mm. Um, it's just that it could have been about forty five minutes shorter with less shagging in it. It's it's kind of you get the point that it's trying to make mm-hmm. after a while, and it's like okay, you you're gonna oh more shagging. There we go. Okay, fine, no mm-hmm. problem. And uh, yeah, so um, what can I say? You could go see it. I mean, if you want to, but um, uh, I think you might want to wait until it comes on the streaming <laughs> <laughs> for more than one reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, there we go. Right, that, and that was it. Poor things. Poor things. Um, porn <laughs> things. Yes. Porn things. Porn thing. I'm not joking. Just Did you have to wait 10 minutes at the end of the film? <laughs> Actually, dear, let's read the credits. <laughs> All of the credits. Let's All of the credits. I kept getting least. hit on the back of the head uh, every one time somebody went up to get to the toilet as well. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. You know, <laughs> did, did, I kept did hearing half the auditorium look like it'd been an explosion in an icing factory? Yeah, the seats wouldn't shut after that. I don't know why. You know? They were quite plus seats before. They're quite hard. It's not a mushroom soup. Indeed, indeed. Oh man. <laughs> oh Just, god. Yeah. Mm. So um, yes. So there mm. we go. Um, uh, uh, porn things. That's uh, that was it. Was it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. Any? Nothing else? Yeah. Um. No. Nothing else. <laughs> okay. Just. Porn nothing, things. nothing you want to confess. <laughs> <laughs> confess, no. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Okay, well, mine's mine's pretty cool, quick this week. Um, <laughs> sorry, Adam. <laughs> just thinking mm. about what we just talked about. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah. No, I haven't watched any films this week. Um, normally, I get through a couple, but I just i I've, I've just been uh, just been totally out of it. However. Two things in the gaming space. Now, normally I don't like talking about games too much because I I tend not to be able to describe them properly. But the first one I've got to recommend to you guys because at some point I would very much like to try this on PC, Mac, with you guys because I think it could be quite funny just to record for five minutes. Okay. Okay. It's called Lethal Company. Oh, yes. Yes. Right? And yes. Essentially, it's still in early access. 
So it's still cheap as chips and it doesn't quite work properly and there's a few glitchy bits and pieces. But the point of it is it's it's multiplayer and you are a an engineer scavenger who has to just do one of one of two things. Basically th- fix things or three things. Fix things, help your mates, carry scrap back to the spaceship to earn money. I've yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. I've seen plenty of those. Have you actually good. have you actually played it though? No, no, no I've never I played enough. it. But okay. I've seen people it's, playing it's, it and having a good old <laughs> giggle <clears throat> with it. Firstly, it's janky as fuck. Secondly, it is really funny because firstly, it's terrifying. Secondly, all the communication, <laughs> all the communication is done through the game, right? Yep. So, if your character dies. The game cuts your voice off instantly. <laughs> right? Oh, what's this button? Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And it's got so many jump scares that you can randomly generate. So there'll be things like, you just be kind of going, right, okay, I'm just going to go and pick up this thing. And then all of a sudden it goes, you suddenly hear, oh my God, and it just goes off. <laughs> <laughs> But not only that, the voice stuff is kind of the genius bit because the thing is, the further away your characters get from each other, the voice is actually dropping volume. Oh, brilliant. So that's the first thing. So you have to kind of stay close to each other if you're going to carry on working, especially with, you know, to collect some of the bigger things to earn money. It's going to take like two of you to carry something. So there's this kind of co op stuff going on. But also things like there's a creature that literally attaches itself to your face and suffocates you, and if your <laughs> if your if your mate gets hit with one of these things, he'll be going, "Hold on, I see something over there," and all of a sudden he's what is freaking out? He's speaking like this because he's got the monster on his face, and <laughs> and it literally muffles and changes the voices of the characters. So so even when you're sitting there going, so somebody fucking help me," you're two you're two hundred feet away from them. They can barely hear you. You've got this thing wrapped around your head, and it's going. And so really, what they can hear is somebody fucking help me, <laughs> or you know, or someone going fuck it up, <laughs> <laughs> and it is. Very, very funny, and it has some real decent jump scares. It's a janky as fuck, but if we could find a way of just re- recording a stream with the four of us, I think 10 minutes of playing that would be some of the funniest stuff <laughs> you've okay. seen. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to go into it now, because I, no. I need to have a think about it, but... Ah, oh, I had a bloody good laugh trying it out. It was <laughs> lots of lots, especially especially comedic bits like someone <laughs> someone doesn't know where the map how the map is and just walks around a corner and falls down a mi- falls down a mine shaft. So they'll be talking and they go, right, okay, I'm going over here. I think I can see some equipment, and I think it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's real cheap. It's eight pound fifty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying buy it now because no, 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 as no, Jim's no. rightly pointed out, you know, cash is short and yeah. July is January is definitely the uh, longest month of a decade. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So there was that. Now the other game I played, and this is where I'm expecting to be fully, totally, and 100 percent judged, um, is Leisure Suit Larry. No, worse than that. And I just need to take a pause because I think nobody's either. Everyone's Great just going to. No, <laughs> worse than that. Worse than that. Power really? Wash Simulator. Oh, no, oh. no, no. Oh. Dude, dude, that's that's great. <laughs> no, it's frustrating as fuck. Is it? Because yeah. I love it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there is nothing quite as satisfying as sitting there with a jet wash cleaning yeah. a patio. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> So I've got that for the PS4. Could we do like a team up over? Yes. Yes. Okay. There we go. Maybe yeah. do something like that. And I've and I've up and I've upgraded my 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 nozzle, madam. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've got I've got narrow I've got narrow beam, high pressure, and spin. Uh, phrasing. Because <laughs> I mm. I did I think the very first level and you. You get a van, your van that you yeah. have to clean. Yeah. I oh, it's so frustrating. No, no. If you click one of the sticks, the dirt that you can't find glows. 
Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you can find it. <laughs> oh, read the instructions. Just like in real life. <laughs> RTFM, man. RTFM. <laughs> yeah, or just widen the beam and just go close. Or get some soap off the table and plug it into your bloody hose. Okay. Yeah, I, I will play this with you. I've got no problems in that. Lovely. Right. I won't go into too much description because, like I say, people who aren't gamers, these sort of things kind of just roll over them and I completely understand that. So that's cool. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, I, I genuinely thought you guys were going to sit there and take the piss out of that. <laughs> I genuinely <laughs> did. I thought, I thought I was going to say Power Wash Simulator and everyone was going to judge me because I'll tell you what, Carol hasn't looked at me like I'm a real man since she discovered me <laughs> sitting there playing, playing patio washing, basically, the game. Well, uh, okay, we're talking about multiplayer games. There's, uh, there's one here. Actually, oh, mm. I wish this was multiplayer, but um, about mm. this one, okay, mm. this, is, this is the description of this game. Yeah. The protagonists of modern games can be very different. Brave mm. knights, brilliant scientists, yeah. or superheroes saving the whole world. Yep. This game offers you a more unusual experience. Mm. Here, you become a mm. birch. Yes, that's right. You are a most ordinary birch tree, and your only goal in this world is to simply exist. There are no trials, no rush, no worries, no responsibilities. <laughs> Nothing is required of you. Just enjoy the bird song and the sound of the wind blowing in your green leaves. <laughs> you can grow in a, in a winter Siberian forest, in a swamp, in a birch grove among your sister birches, mm. uh, and in other, even rather illogical places. Become the best mm. birch you can be. Wow. So there we go. So you just Birch sit there. Simulator 39p <laughs> on Epic Games. Yeah. At the moment, I oh. am so fucking tempted <laughs> to get that and do a YouTube channel just of mm. that. Nice, Elton. I'm coming for you, mate, and your uh, your, your what you do about your game. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. it. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, yeah, the long dark is history, man. It's all about the birch simulator. Okay, I I will look into this. This, yeah, I, mm. I'd like to say it looks good, but you'd be lying. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, you could be a you could be a birch. <coughs> right, I, I do believe there's some DLC where you can become the larch. Oh, good, the larch. <laughs> That's a Python add-on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he is trying not to be seen. <laughs> anyway oh you get to choose different birches there's birch one birch two a complete birch, three, birch a total birch, four. birch. <laughs> you can choose what a birch you can put masks on your birch you can even put a sword and an axe what, like a mask and a on hat. your birch what you can are you going to do disguise the fucking thing it's a tree well, of course well, you don't want everybody seeing who you are and coming up and bothering you, do you? You know. Okay, now I now now I wasn't going to judge anyone because of my my power wash simulator thing, but and now I'm de- definitely going to judge people. <laughs> I'm birch simulator, birch simulator. Mm. Oh God, yes. yes. There, there's a Russian hut simulator as well. <laughs> Russian hut. Is that, Russian. Is, that Jabba, on... is that Jabba the Hutt in the snow going hello, comrade? <laughs> you drop, you drop, put, you drop your your parcels, solo. <laughs> I will send bounty hunter to get you. <laughs> no, this game is basically a classic walking simulator. All you do is explore the detailed recreated rooms of an old Russian hut. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yes. Jesus fucking magic. <laughs> We're through the looking glass, people. <laughs> well, I'm surely through the looking glass. <laughs> See, one game I'm surprised we haven't played all together is Among Us. That is true. Oh, yeah. That is true. I'm we surprised should... we haven't done that. Yeah. I don't think anyone would watch us play games, because I find watching people play games, with na- with certain exceptions, if it, it, it's more fun for the people playing the games than it is the people watching the games. It depends on the humour, though. It does depend on the humour and the people playing the game and the game yeah. itself. But, yeah, okay, I, I'll play I'll play Among Us, for sure. Hold on, hold on this, oh, there's messages coming through. Yeah, oh. it's me. I've just oh. put a link for the Birch, Birch Simulator. S- fucking Birch Simulator. Birch I'm not going to waste bandwidth with downloading that. <laughs> but it's only... Th- come on, it's 30, you know, no, I'm, you can't I'm talk- go wrong. I'm talking about your message. Not the- oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the fucking game. I'm not going to go anywhere near the game. 
Anyway, so that was my anyway that was my week. That was really it. I mean, I'm off tomorrow, and I might be going to see um, Godzilla minus one. Ooh. But it does depend whether or not I actually the coffers can withstand pay twenty five quid to see it at the fucking IMAX because that's the only place it's at. Ah. Uh. And I don't know paying twenty five quid at the IMAX at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday <laughs> is is necessarily the right way of spending my day, but all my money or what's left of my money, my children won't eat. <laughs> 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 but don't worry, kids, I saw Godzilla. Um anyway. But yeah, if I do I will report back. But anyway, one last thing, the parish notice before I go on to feedback. Um on, on the Facebook group uh, as a celebration, of, well, I say a celebration, as a note of um, the 25th, is it 25th anniversary of um, Blair Witch? Yeah, I um, think so. Yeah, yeah I, I, released, I released the Blair Witch episode uh, we did, me and you, Dal, um, back in 2017. Indeed, Fancy um, Pam. Fancy yeah, Pam. Fancy Pam and Hampton Fancher. Yeah. And it got quite a good response, which kind of prompted me to th- think about releasing version one back issue back catalogue but as we've mentioned before the back catalogue is one of those things where we were making ourselves laugh with the understanding that nobody else was listening exactly. unfortunately <laughs> people are now listening so yes. so releasing it out into the wide wide world is likely to get us fired hung drawn ported, pilloried and possibly put on some kind of <laughs> some kind of list somewhere <laughs> so so we didn't really want to release it to people who didn't have a sense of humor and didn't know well didn't want to take us out of context just so they could be offended so the plan was to find out what people would want if people would be interested and we got some positive responses i haven't decided on anything yet it is being discussed, and I am looking into various options of getting version one on a private server or a private access only for people to access via the Facebook group because you'll all be guilty by association. <laughs> <laughs> you all knew what you're getting into. You encouraged me to re release it. You're all to blame. So. Yeah. Yeah, so as long as I've got that that caveat there, I might I might well do it. So just watch this space, and if anything happens, I will let you know. Right now, feedback. Oh, one well, no, no, actually, before I do finish, the last thing was I went to Martin Thompson's birthday. Hey, there you go. Stuff. How was it? It was good. It was good. There was some nice people I've never met before. Um, and they were nice, and there was uh, Amory and Pete who were nice, and obviously we all had a chat, and much beer was had, and I made a well, I say I made a card, I made a card on Moonpig for Martin, <laughs> which was which was basically Martin's birthday birthday drink up uh, pictures in con- without context, much like the, he makes those pictures oh, without okay, context yeah. on on yeah. Fa- on Facebook, so. I thought that would work. Unfortunately, Moonpig didn't deliver it, and it didn't even turn up. And well, it still hasn't turned up. And um, so I ended up having to print it out, stick it on a piece of paper, slap it onto a piece of card, stick it down, and give it to him <laughs> like that, saying it would have looked like this. <laughs> so, which he which he took in in the spirit it was meant. So that's good. But um, yeah, we went to the Garrick Arms, and while the company was nice, and the um, drinks were good and everything was nice and we all had fun and we had a good old chat and everything was cool. Mm-hmm. The one thing I will say is the Garrick Arms is made for people who do British Sign Language because I've never been in the pub quite so loud in all my life. <laughs> it was like sitting right. inside a speaker. <laughs> but, you know... <sighs> it... Okay, sorry, you've just reminded me of something I did at work this Oh, week. <laughs> what, stuck your head in a speaker? No, I, I went Moon to... card. I, I had to go to a uh, a a brew a, a, a pub mm. to to work on their lift. Mm. This pub has a brewery attached to it, right? And you walk in, mm. and the the hops hit you in the face, and really? the noise. Somebody throwing them at you or something? Or... No, 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 the, the smell. 
this oh. oh right okay oh yeah just like woof or, as, or as is it very through. punchy hops are there's like there's a big hop sand in there and it just smacks you one right in yeah. the face <laughs> have it a hop bop beer stop. with a kick yeah there you go. but but the noise it was like being in a noise factory yeah i think this is where they create noise it was i, I was trying to speak to the manager and we're shouting Mm. It, it's not a pleasant place to go. I I cannot see my. It, it's more a bar than a pub. Mm. And yeah, they had this factory at the back. Oh, it's just terrible. And then they're trying to sell merch for it and tours of it. And you know, if you just mm. go up a set of stairs, you can see it. Mm. So I don't know how you're trying to sell a tour for it because we can see it. Mm. It's there. It's it's right there. If you go around the building, <laughs> see inside the glass windows. It's a bar. What do you want? Yeah, <laughs> it's pathetic. <laughs> but man, it was so loud. Anyway, mm. sorry. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. No, I mean, I wasn't going to add much more to that because I mean, you know, I pretty much said it. You know, it was a nice time. I had to leave a little early because I had a guy coming to do my guttering, uh, <laughs> guttering in the morning. Uh, phrasing and um <laughs> yeah so i had to leave about half 10 which is a bit of a shame but um but no it was it was a good time and i enjoyed it but it was just yeah the carrot arms was bloody loud jesus christ um yeah that was it so that was my week there you go and happy birthday martin again for last week so anyway hope the hangover wasn't too bad um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. didn't he miss his his stop on the way yeah, home? Yeah, yeah. He he was he was in the grip of the great god Peroni. Um, uh, by the time right. I left, yeah, um, yeah. yeah there was, <laughs> no good was going to come from that. Uh, but you know, you know, he did make it home. So good on him. He did better than I did. He didn't end up in Margate. Um, so uh, yes, there's that. Now on to this week's feedback. Um, this week's feedback. As ever, you know, what's been going on in the old Facebook group is pretty much what we had last week, which is which is basically air fryer, air fryer. By the way, Lee can't say ibuprofen or ibuprofen. <laughs> ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. <laughs> ibuprofen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and no one really commented on the film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why we review the films anymore. I might as well just say a few things and just say good night, everyone. <laughs> but um, yeah. So um, we had um, we had Murray Christensen, Murray the Pie Man, who said uh, based on that um, story a story I told last week about Avora, uh, the the cringeworthy panto ad uh, panto filled um, Avatar ripoff. Mm-hmm. Um where he said, I'm sure it's unrelated, but now I suddenly seem to be getting ads for that Avora thing. I sure, I'll <laughs> jump on a train from Falkirk to have some cocktails with some Amtrams in London. So, uh, yeah, so if any, so if Facebook has suddenly started telling you that you want to go to Avora, you know, just, I can only apologise. I can only apologise for my influence on your, on your algorithms. Um, he instead also said, I can't say ibuprofen, Either <laughs> Coco Cocodamol as well. I can't even imagine how he pronounced that. Cocodamol as well. Um cue much hilarity when the missus makes me ask for a Coke Coke Dotama roll. <laughs> oh my god. Coke <laughs> Also, is Ibuprofen, is he in Star Wars? No, he isn't the guy who is in isn't episode he? one. No, he's not in Star no, Wars no, episode no. one, though. No, he's not Star, in episode Star two. Wars episode no, two. None of those. No, not, he's not in <laughs> Star Wars episode three. No, not even in, not even in <laughs> Star Wars uh, Caravan of Courage. What about no. um, uh, uh, Star Wars Ewoks? Go for a piss, piss. up, piss. <laughs> yeah, you can get fine throwing a piss in the woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can nowadays. Um, no, or Star no, Wars no. do Ewok shit in the woods. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not that one either. No, 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 no. Ewok, Ewok's caravan of shittage. No, it's not none of, none of those things. Um, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Od- Odile Thomas uh, left um, left a fantastic healthy eating uh, thing from uh, from a from a TikTok that does does healthy eating with um, air fryers. Um, but the healthy eating with the air fryers apparently makes a pound of halloumi um, instantly healthy. 
because apparently you chop <laughs> you chop a pound of halloumi up, stuff some chorizo in, stick it in an air fryer, wrap it up in some deep fried fucking <laughs> <laughs> onion rings, and it's magically healthy thanks to an air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah. TikTok recipes all over. Yeah, exactly. It there is, is yeah. there is a Reddit called shit food, and <laughs> that comes right from that. He instead again comes back and says, um, "Centuries reports, sir, air fryers to the southwest, thousands of them." <laughs> um, and he posts up a picture from Zulu. Um, I've just put a, uh, a, a photo in our little group. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm getting this. <laughs> What's that? What is that? What have you put in? It's a t-shirt with air fryer times on it. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Don't you dare. Don't you encourage them. Do you know, we ever have a big meet-up ever again, if it ever happens, I'm buying that t-shirt. That's the thing I'm wearing. If it okay. ever happens, if it ever happens, I could have the cheapest shindig ever. All I'd do is I'd stick an air fryer in one corner, leave everyone with a lump of cheese and just oh, walk God, away. Yeah. It'll only cost me like 10 quid. Yeah. And everyone bring your own squeaky there. cheese, thank yeah. you. Just bring your own squeaky cheese, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and um, what else? Yeah, and then, we, then I finally decided enough was enough, and I put up a poll on Facebook, on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash the Black Dog Podcast. And the and the poll says, and I quote, right, fuck it, let's get it sorted once and for all. Air fryers, a miraculous culinary marvel or just a poncy cross between a microwave and a hairdryer for people who don't know how ovens work. Um, the response was more than we get for most episodes. <laughs> from one of the things like, so, about society in general, do you think it could be improved <clears throat> or, uh, you know, yeah. by, by helping other people or yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah, so so you know we had we had on the one side we had someone called Elta McManus saying it's the bread maker for the twenty twenties, um, and it, Mike Higgins saying it gathers dust next to a Breville toasty maker and a George Foreman grill, and, <laughs> and a soda stream. Um, yeah, Murray Christensen uh, said that they have become a weird and evangelical cult. Probably will get one at some point, but I don't think it will ever be life changing. Now, a halogen oven, however, is a different story. <laughs> um, which blew Jeffrey Mark Hyman's mind because he said, Wow, halogen ovens. I've only just learned about this. They're easy bake ovens on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> will Catelyn Hallett says, My answer somewhere lies in the middle. I appreciate speed and efficiency, but they're not worth banging on about. They're limited in what they can do, mainly due to size. I like having it, but I wouldn't miss it if it was gone. Um, Teresa Burnside, whoever she might be, I don't know. It's a bit of a mystery. <laughs> says, doubters will be burned for their heresy. We are legion. <laughs> <laughs> right on, sister. Yeah. yeah. Michael Wilding, the best thing I ever bought for my lorry was this was an air fryer. <laughs> no longer need to eat crappy microwave meals. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, you could fit a, you could fit a truck in. in yeah, well, I was going to say, we appear to have a lot of... Um, we need to go back to getting the BJ and the Bear um, theme tune so. running again, because Mike... And a big hello to all you truckers out there. Yeah, hello to you truckers out there out on the road, Rolling Steve. down to Dallas, <laughs> fire in my palace. Up to New Orleans, so who knows where? Do, 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 do. Anyway, but Michael Wilding says says best thing I've ever bought for my lorry, and then Mike Higgins returns. Um, old, old, old <laughs> rolling Mike Higgins out there on the road, and he says, "You've just reminded me why I don't sleep out in these things." <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris Johnson said, "I, I would, I could, could I add the way to cook chip? It's a good way to cook chips without burning your house down while you're drunk." Yes, it is. Mm. Very good. John Campion mm. says they're small and very efficient ovens, but that's the, that's sort of why they're good. For most things, they do a better job more quickly than your regular oven. They do burgers, meatballs, etc. superbly, mm. along with roasted veg. Pretty much the only thing we use the oven for these days is baking bread. <laughs> Hunter Langley, are they? They are. They are really just co- efficient co- convection ovens, but they really are darn handy. <laughs> I mean. Yep. The, 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 I just, just like you know, I'm like, hey, we're watching this really interesting film. If anybody's got anything to say, <laughs> do write in and say things. And then it's like, <laughs> bong, <laughs> bong, me. Okay, tell me why the air fry is so good. <laughs> Fucking hell! I mean, <laughs> literally, that's the power of the air fryer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> is he instead going, Luke Ninja, is the air fryer stronger? No, no. Quicker, <laughs> easier, more seductive it is. <laughs> yeah. Craig Jarvis, I know how ovens work. I also know how gas prices work. Carol Passaro, she goes, basically, they're a drawer with a heating element, like my like an old cooker ring. My daughter bought one, and I told her what a waste of money. But now I use it more than her, and it saves so much hassle. That's <laughs> <laughs> how it happens. Yeah. Gar- <laughs> Gary Madden, I'm going to start cooking with my hairdryer, the Madden Fryer gun. <laughs> Uh, Mike Burns, ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause to this week's contestants. Unfortunately, you've missed our star prize of a historically of ephemeral novelty cooking device. Let's take a look at what we could have won. Our star prize was a goblin tease made. Never mind, you go home with an air fryer and a dusty bin. <laughs> Fucking goblin tease made. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jack Woodgate, I currently view it like I did a Breville toaster sandwich maker or the George Foreman grill. You get gifted one, buy one yourself, use it all the time for a couple of months, then it sits in the back of your cupboard until you need the fuse for the plug. (laughs) (laughs) I genuinely couldn't believe, I genuinely couldn't believe how one poll suddenly went from like <laughs> one or two votes to like 58 votes 90 oh, hold on how many 24 there we got yep. 50 52 53 58 votes yeah 58 votes of of people just going oh god yes no heresy i mean just what is wrong with you people <laughs> if you put down a poll f- about the blade runner and what cut you prefer then five, it'll just be like yeah, three five votes. votes. Yeah, and and two of them will be me turning, yeah. changing, changing views, and yeah, wow. I mean, you know, brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Black Dog is now pivoting to the air fryer heresy. That's what we're calling it, mm-hmm. and we'll yep. just call it that. We'll just every week we'll just do a new air fryer recipe, and I'll just mock it from a corner. <laughs> Anyway, what, uh, air fryer Warhammer forty thousand is about the air fryer heresy. The air fryer heresy. Yeah, it's, wait, it's wait. new Warhammer expansion. Exactly. Oh. <coughs> when, when you say air fryer recipe, mm. you mean open drawer, put the thing in, close drawer, turn it on, and then open it again, and it's done. Repeat. Yeah, That's pretty much like a normal oven. Oh, you admit that now? No, but that's the way you're describing a normal oven. As yes. well, it's, yeah. it's like you know the recipe is what, what, what is the making things to put in it. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, God. It's adjusting yeah. times. There's a science to it, man. <laughs> Get your slide rule out, you know. <laughs> slide rule, fucking hell. Yeah. Get your slide rule out. <laughs> Give you fucking slide rule. You Let's are a see. fucking slide rule. <laughs> Virgo is an ascendant against Libra, which must mean, ah, yes, only 15 minutes for croquet potatoes in an air fryer. 200 degrees. Jesus, H. Fucking Christ. Oh, well, there you go. Lovely. Fantastic work. Well, if you've got anything to add, I won't say if you want to send feedback in for the end of the movies, because nobody ever does. If you want to tell us all about air fryers, send it to Black Dog at I don't give a fuck dot com. <laughs> no, if anybody would like to send any feedback in, do either join the Facebook or cooking group. Tips. No, shut up. <laughs> send it go to the Facebook group, which is Facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast, where we also post up any notices for things like the extend you know, re- return of version one Black Dog. Um and uh you know leave some feedback under the episodes or you can send in some feedback via email um to feedback at blackdogpodcast dot com um where you can send me all your pictures I can tell you what we could do like Tony Hart's gallery send me pictures of your air fryer <laughs> and I'll put them on his gallery on the Facebook group oh, well why not why not lean into it. I'm yeah. not going to get one, but why not lean into it? Just let them have it. <laughs> the, the audience has spoken. That's all they want. <laughs> Air fryers. 
<laughs> I'm just going to do a YouTube channel, which is going to be just an air fryer just sitting there, and then occasionally the drawer will open and then a piece of halloumi will go in it. I wonder if Fred Dreyer's got an air fryer. Fred, Fred Dreyer in his air fryer. There oh, we go. Lord. Danny Dyer in his air dryer. Yep. <laughs> Danny Dyer's air fryer. <laughs> Here I am. That's probably coming to Channel 5 as we speak. Danny Dyer's favourite My name's Dyer. Danny Dyer, and this is the Ninja 5000 Slag. <laughs> Your Fuck latest you. and greatest air fryer. Your air slag. That's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have an air dryer, and I have an air fryer. <laughs> and what, which one's better? <laughs> Danny like Dyer. Do you like dryers? Yeah. D- Dyer... Uh, Dyer Dryer Fryer for the, the showdown. Actually, I haven't tried drying my clothes in one yet. Maybe I'll do that as well. There we go. Well, it'll only be a single sock, won't it? Uh, a couple of socks, actually. So, uh, oh, oh, don't offend the don't offend Sorry. the air, air fryer. You Put a pair hear. of pants in the other one. You know, we're good. Pair of pants in the other one. Yep. Yeah, and the food will taste just the same. Indeed, spray them with oil. <laughs> <laughs> then, it's a, then it's an oil fryer. It's just a fat fryer. It's not an oil fryer. Do you know the difference between a fat fryer and just spraying something with a thin layer of fat? Do you know what the difference Shall I tell you? It's about, I don't know, maybe uh, 500 milligrams of fucking fat. That's what it is, okay? Oh, and, and you've lost so much weight, have you? You've lost so I've, much I've weight. I've lost tons. I'll tell you that, mate. I'll tell you what. It's like... I, you go into a room with me now, and I speak, and somebody goes, where's that fucking voice coming from? So like, I'm standing here. Look, is look it, at me. I'll just turn is, sideways. Is it the air fryer or the fat cunt standing beside it? <laughs> <laughs> that donut-eating motherfucker right there. Yeah, the, the guy sitting on sitting on the sofa made of pizza boxes. Yep, that's him. <laughs> it's him. That's him. Right. I am pizza cop. <laughs> <laughs> Part man, part pizza, all cop. Anyway, exactly. right. And on that note, I'm 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 calling it for this half of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know all the usual. Roll the jingle. <laughs> we'll be back for ready or not. <laughs> Right, so Ready or Not is a 2019 American black comedy horror film directed by Matt Bertinelli Olpin, Tyler Gillette, and written by Guy Buswick, 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 (laughs) Buswick, a boobafen by by Guy Abubafen and Christopher Coco Um and R. You like, Chris- did, did you watch that TV show, Lee? Uh, the Book of Boobafet. No, yeah, the Book of Boobafat. <laughs> the Pension Book of Boobafat. Um, yeah, no, no. Um, anyway, R. Christopher Murphy also wrote it. There you go. That's the one word I can say. Um, it stars Samara Weaving, aka. The the um the horror queen the horror queen version of Margot Robbie, um Adrian Brody, Mark O'Brien, it's Henry Carzani or Carney, depending on how you want to pronounce that bit, and Andy McDowell. Uh, it follows a young bride who's haunted. Uh, haunted. What am I saying? Fucking my brain is hunted by her spouse's wealthy Satan worshipping family as a part of a wedding night ritual. Um, the film began production in 2017, um, and was released July 27th, 2019. It had a budget of $6 million. How much do you think it made at the box office, Elton? Uh, a bandolier full of fake ammunition. Nice. Jim. It made do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars, go directly to the naughty step. Nice, <laughs> Jim. Uh, Darren, uh, I think it made fourteen boxes of snakes and ladders, and one child punched squarely in the face. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, you're all wrong. What it made was a goat pit. <laughs> <laughs> It all, but it did later go on to home home cinema and home movie release, where it earned pow, 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 
Anyway, <sighs> there you go. Um, <laughs> right, as ever, we'll try and do a non-spoilery round the table review first, very quickly, and then we'll do the spoiler zone. And then we'll we'll wrap it up, and you can find out what next movie is. So we'll start with you, Elton. What did you think of Ready or Not? I thought this film was harmless fun. Right. I think, Darren, you have found the absolute medium of films ever created. <laughs> Absolute medium of film. Yes. So on the scale of films, you have yeah. great films to the left, mm-hmm. crap films all the way to the right. Here I and am right stuck in the middle. <laughs> in the you. middle, <laughs> on the fulcrum of the, uh, of the little... Uh, Balancing just balance. there. Yeah. It's right in the middle. That's it. Mm-hmm. It is neither good nor bad. Not happy, nor sad, or any other things that rhyme. But uh, yeah, <laughs> bang in the middle. It is water. It has pH seven. Uh, okay, <laughs> it is what the kids don't call mid these days. Yeah, <laughs> at least oh, he right. didn't say it was beige on the colour chart. You know, oh, God. Like that. no, no, magnolia, my friend, magnolia. magnolia. Okay, well, I. I Mm, okay, this this this, prom- this this promises to be an interesting conversation. A man who finds something so aggressively middle of the road that he can't muster up even the slightest kind of opinion on it. Right? Okay. Should we just stop and talk about air fryers some more? No, please, no. <coughs> right, okay. Uh, Jim, what about you? What do you think? Uh, well, this was a second time watch for me. Um, I think it... It's a fun movie. Um, I think on, I mean, I, I watched it. It's probably I can't remember. I watched it probably just before Christmas. So it was a fairly recent revisit for me. Mm. But I, so I did sort of, so I did remember most of the twists and turns. Mm. And uh, I think maybe it's just because we watched White Tiger and Saltburn. Mm. Uh, I did find this way really kind of, you know, it, it's absolutely fine. It's entertaining, but. Uh, there could have been a bit more bite to it, a bit more mm. of the old eat the rich vibes, which we've been enjoying so much. Mm. <laughs> but then again, we have a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of millionaires coming after us. Why do you keep doing these films which stir up the proletariat? Um, yeah. Um, for me, I'm sure I'd watched this film before. Clearly, upon watching it, I hadn't, because <laughs> half of it I didn't, re- most of it I didn't remember, and I've got to say, I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say I'm with Elton because that that would imply I had complete apathy. There's lots of it I enjoyed, um, but there I did feel like I'd been sold, missold a bill of goods, um, which we can't really get into until we go into the spoiler zone. But there's a lot of stuff where I was thinking, ah, any minute now, something's going to happen. Ah, any minute now, it's all going to turn the table. Any minute. And then it just didn't until it suddenly did. And then just went, da 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 out. And, um, yeah, I I can't say more without the po- without going into the spoiler zone, I'm afraid. But, okay. yeah, I, I kind of, I think I was expecting The Hunt. Do you remember that? That one with Perry, um, Betty Gilpin. Is that the one with the the mask thing? Yeah, well, I remember. No, that one. no, the yeah. one, the one with the um, the the redneck woman who gets dropped oh, into yes, sort of like the yeah. Hunger Games and mm. then turns the tables on everyone and turns out to be the the proper badass. Oh yeah, yeah. While all the posh people will build like little tiny shacks, pretending to be kindly farm owners and stuff like that, and then shooting shooting some lowly git. You know, and um, yeah, I was kind of expecting that and I didn't quite get that. And I don't know if that's the film's fault, the advertising fault or my fault for expecting more than I got. And that's kind of the only thing I can say about it right now. It's not not an unenjoyable film. It's certainly got its moments and I certainly enjoyed a lot of them. But there was still this kind of gnawing thing in me going, a bit like Jim, I kind of was expecting a little bit 
more, but it was it was all right. It was okay. So there you go. Um, Darren, what about you? You picked the film. What do you think? I certainly did. Um, again, this is my second time mm-hmm. of watching it. Um, I did actually buy this when it came out because mm-hmm. I couldn't find any streaming service, so uh, I just went and bought the the Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I still enjoyed it. You know, mm. it's not um, uh, pretty much like you guys. It's you know, it's good. It's it's like one of those films that you discover on a Sunday afternoon that actually wasn't that bad. Mm. You know, it's uh, a bit. It's a bit like a Death Race two thousand job. You know, you go mm. in thinking this is going to be absolute shit, when actually it wasn't that bad. It's no. not. It's, it's not. Um, you know, it's not award winning material or anything, but still, it's quite enjoyable. Mm. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's how I found it anyway. Okay, cool. Right. Well, there you go. So you heard our our um our okay thumbs up to aggressively. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what was that? What does that future armor episode where everyone's completely non emo in it, completely lacking emotion? You know, I'm about to die. Tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's you know. So we've had we've got a range of emotions going on here, kind of from. To, yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to hear more and you have seen this film, then feel free to carry on. If you haven't, obviously pause it here, go watch the actual film, and come back to us. But right now, we're going to. Ju- I'm just going to press all my buttons on the soundboard just to make it sound like we're putting some kind of thought into this spoiler zone thing. I really should make a jingle, but anyway, it goes something like this: Money plan, money plan, money plan. <laughs> <laughs> Tetsu Canada! Put your helmet on. We'll be reaching speeds of three. Uh, phrasing? Baby, baby! There you go. I think if you've gone through all of that, <laughs> there you go. I think I think that says, nothing says spoiler like me just randomly slapping the soundboard. Um, right. So we're into the spoilers. Obviously, you've only got yourself to blame now if we spoil the film and you don't want to bloody have it spoiled. So, meh. Um, let's get started with it. So, I know, Jim, you and Darren have both seen this film. So, obviously, you're coming at this stuff with less of a surprise. Um, but so I'm just going to go to Elton to start with. Okay, Captain Captain Meh, <laughs> Captain One Two Seven One Two Seven One Two Seven Gray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little graphics graphics joke for you out there, ladies and gentlemen. Um. And I just wanted wanted to ask you, sort of, what were you expecting from this film? Um, I uh, I think something more along the lines of the Babysitter that we watched a little while ago, not because of the the actor in it or anything like that, but mm. because I I, I I didn't see any trailers for it or anything mm. like that, but. I think just going off of it, I I think I'm expecting twists and turns, mm. something lo- looking sharp. Not that it didn't, but it just, it was quite bland all the way through. And mm. I, I, th- I think it's, um, I think it, it does what it wants to do very well. Mm-hmm. But it's just so mediocre for me. Mediocre. Because okay. it, it just doesn't it, it doesn't excite me. It doesn't anger me. Right. I'm not getting anything from it. You know when you listen to a, a good song by a band, but it, it doesn't get your juices flowing. It doesn't really make you feel any passion for it whatsoever. Mm. It it's just there. And this film is the Sheeran just... effect. <laughs> the what effect? The Sheeran effect. Yeah, Sheeran effect. No, no, hate. Just hate. Yeah, well, that's 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 just hate. That's a personal. That's a personal issue, I think. Mm. Yeah, but it. Th- this film is it. It's just that I don't feel anything for it whatsoever. I'm not excited all the way through it. I'm not scared. I'm not wondering what's going on. I'm just going along with the motions of it and just 
I don't know what to do with this. Mm. It, it's not giving me anything. Okay. It, it's trying to be some sort of mystery, but it's okay. Well, then they start handing out like crossbows and swords and axes. And you're like, okay, well, they're going on a hunt. And she's the, the prey and it's around the house. And it's, we've seen this many, many times before in many different guises, some better, some worse. And this is slab bang in the middle of everything. Right. It's just not giving me any emotions whatsoever. Right. And cool. I, I think when you watch a film, mm. you require something from it. You require an emotion. You you either attach yourself to a person in, in the film or the story of the film. You have mm. some sort of connection with it. Right. If you don't have a connection with it, whether it be good or bad, mm. then you're just in no man's land. Hmm. There's only so many times I can say mediocre in different ways. <laughs> okay. So so what you're basically saying is you want an early night and you're off. No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. But so just if, if I didn't if I don't feel anything for it, then I don't know what to do with that. Mm. It didn't make me angry. Mm. I think the acting was good all the way through. Hmm. nothing mind-blowing or anything like that i thought the the house that they were running through looked beautiful i thought the sets were great i thought deaths were okay mm -hmm. but there was nothing there's nothing for me to attach to okay there's no characters i'm like i'm really hoping for them to do something or hope that person dies in a, a, a sinister way or Hmm. I just don't feel anything for it. I'm really sorry, but it's just... Don't apologise to me. I, I didn't I, make the bloody film. <laughs> it's, it's just one of them things where we, we watch Birdemic. Mm. We get angry with it. We feel something for it. Mm -hmm. We watch Jaws. Mm -hmm. Fucking love it. Mm. And attach ourselves to it and love it for that. And this is just so in the middle of everything. Mm. Where I'm just like, it was a film. It happened. An hour and a half passed. I moved on. I okay. couldn't tell you a single name in it. Right. Okay. Wow. okay. Well, there you go. Darren, you were going to jump in there, I saw, I heard. Darren? Uh, no, I don't think I was now. It's gone. <laughs> Sorry, the, back, thought, the thought's in, gone. He's backing away. Back the thought's gone. I think, I think he's uh, Elton's painted over my thought with uh, a nice hefty shade of shade. magnolia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a nice hefty shade of uh, shade, yes. yes. I think we'll have that, yes. Yeah. Shagnolia, the most shagnolia. hefty shade of magnolia. <laughs> right, okay. Quoting well, Tom Cruise in the film, this hmm. is my penis, yeah. <laughs> what? Have you, the mag, magnolia. <laughs> oh, no, no, I've not watched that. No, no, I have no, no idea. That's a, I've not watched it myself, but that has been, that little bit has been, shall we say, banded around. Oh, right, um, okay. No, yes. Tom Cruise's penis has been bandied around. Okay, uh, yeah, and that scene. So we're gonna get sued, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice, cool. Um, yeah. So, so okay. Elton's Elton's firmly on the fence, clearly. Um, <laughs> and and um, I mean, for, for you, Jim. I mean, you were saying like the the film was lacking bite. I mean. Is that just purely because we've just been in something of an eat the rich kind of vibe for the last couple of weeks? So we've been seeing some proper new raw style films on that along that lines, or what? Um, well, I, I, in comparison to things we've been watching, <laughs> it, <laughs> it does feel um, a bit weak sauce. Mm. Um, I mean, I think kind of the idea of um, you know the the family mm. i i think uh there, there could have been a bit more sort of depth a bit more cruelty to them mm. um i mean i think the first time i watched it i was uh it was you know it rolled along and um you know it's kind of it's fairly undemanding i say it's a perfect friday or saturday night film mm. you know what i mean and um it's you know it's fairly fun enough and there's some you know some very funny bits including a child being punched you know, yes I should, <laughs> think, ooh, I should, should I be cheering that yeah yeah sure yeah. it's okay but you know what I mean and um 
uh, it's, it's nothing too extreme, nothing too offensive. It's you should you know. Mm-hmm. I imagine you might be a lot more impressed with it if you've not seen a ton of these hunting human films before. Mm. And, you know, it's probably a film made for a younger, less cheesy audience than us. Mm. But the first time I watched it, I did sort of feel kind of, there isn't, as you said, that turning the tables sort mm. of moment. Mm. I mean, it does have twists, but I did sort of, and at the time I kind of, oh, I, I thought, well, that's pretty good because it didn't do the ex- quite play out how I was expecting it to go mm. it was actually a bit more grounded and less gung-ho and the first time around i thought oh that's okay that you know you took me by surprise there the second time i sort of felt kind of actually this plot does need it could do with some more twists and turns to it mm. um well you know that is me watching it twice in quite close succession yeah uh, and remembering what's coming so mm. You fact factored that into my remarks. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> um, fair. that's fair. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, I think I, I understand that. I think the problem is the, the family out well sketched in enough at the start, mm. and there's probably slightly too many of them, mm. and they all tend to look a bit the same. Yeah, and I think for this sort of story. Um, you really need each one to be a separate kind of grotesque character. Mm. Not necessarily all physically grotesque, but you need you need, you know, like a gun mad one, a slutty one, mm. you know, a one that's really <laughs> gross and you know <laughs> one shagging one is shag- really drunk. You know yeah, what I mean? But one you, you need to, his au pair, that sort of thing. Yeah, so you need you need sort of spice. You can sketch <laughs> these in, you know. Yeah, you you, you, need, you need the spice girls effect. Yeah. You need because otherwise it's kind of oh someone's got show who was it was that one of the sisters no it was one of the maids okay someone else said oh it's one of the maids again and it's kind of i don't give a fuck about the maids what are they doing there mm. you know what i mean it's kind of i think it's a bit weirdly what you sort of waited mm. like that for the for the kills and the characters don't um they do they do all have a bad fate but it does make you wait for it and yeah, I think that's a bit of a failing pace. Wise, you need to. Mm. Yeah, that that was that. You was... need either them to pop a few off throughout the film, or you need some some acts of real scum and villainy to to ramp it mm. up a bit. You know mm. what I mean? To to bring each one into like focus as this is, ladies and gentlemen, dinner skirt. Yeah. You need <laughs> yeah. your oohs and your ahs. Yeah, yeah. You you the you know. Proper like booable and hissy moments where it sets you up to really enjoy these people getting a very violent uh, physical discourtesy. <laughs> physical discourtesy, I love that. <laughs> Welcome to physical discourtesy. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to jump straight in because I feel like if I go off on one, it might go on for a little while. But. Uh, just go over to you, Dal. I mean, you're you're obviously, you obviously recommended this film, um, yeah. or put it forward rather. I won't say recommended because I know what I've <laughs> picked for next week. But um, <laughs> I'm, don't, I'm not going to start placing ownership of these <laughs> films. It's on not people. the hottie and the naughty, is it? No, it's not. No, no? It's not. okay. No, you're going to wish it was, but no, it's not. Um, and I was just going to say. How did you feel going through the second time this time round? Because I mean, you obviously said you bought the Blu-ray. Yeah, you you've just watched the same films we had. You know, the sort like I say, the White Tiger, Salt Burn kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. where all these repellent, horrible sort of like in you know entitled assholes get their comeuppance. Yeah. So here we are again, but now you're looking at it through a lens of well, we just watched two of those, which are quite modern. By comparison, because was it ready or not? Was twenty nineteen, which feels like a, a like an eon ago. A while ago, mm. yeah. I mean, especially with COVID in the middle. I mean, it's, it feels like <laughs> it feels mm. like it might as well have been an entire lifetime ago. So, how about now? Do you are you still did you still enjoy it the same way as you did the first time round, or is like I was saying to Jim, is there something about it now that you kind of like, yeah, you know. It's, you know, it's not quite. It's not quite the sort of like subversive, sort of. Oh, look how rich people are really horrible kind of film that you you used to think it was. Or, um, 
what can I say? It's, uh, I didn't think it was really anything radical when I watched it. I think I've got the same level of entertainment out of it as I got last mm. time, which was, that was all right. Mm. You know, I'm not disappointed in that. I'm not sad that I, that I bought the film and mm. watched it or whatever. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of did enjoy it as much as I did last time, which was, mm. you know, I've been entertained. That's it. Yeah. That's, so, um, that's about it. Mm. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I suppose it could have been spiced up a bit, you know. Um, I think the running time probably restricted them on that. I've mm. got to say, though, I think it's really great that three of Robert Palmer's old backing singers got uh, work <laughs> after this, though, so, you know. So, um, yeah. 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 I mean... That that was that was kind of the nice running gag with like every single mm. one of them getting off and being awful people to start with, and yeah. then and then not only that, but then there's always like a little comment off off camera. That one was my favourite <laughs> <laughs> each time, <laughs> which kind of made them sound like they were interchangeable and nobody really mm. knew who they were. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So that was quite cool. Um, um, I'm sure if I'd had me more intelligent sort of like head on, I could see what they were trying to take the piss out of with that but um no didn't at all well that was was just that was pointing at the fact that they didn't really know anyone below their station they weren't paying attention to them they just knew that it was a a a foreign lady in a slinky back dress with their hair pulled back so therefore that's it looks after kids that's their job thanks very much <clears throat> so they never really recognised who they were, even when they got offed in various different ways, like being killed by a dumb waiter or being shot <laughs> through the throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, Jim, you were gonna pa- you were gonna s- say something? I I heard you. Moving. No, no, just uh, quietly coughing. <laughs> oh right, okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just... was gonna mention <laughs> about did because we've watched these other two movies, um, mm. the the White Tiger and what's the other one? Sorry, uh, Saltburn. Yeah, Saltburn. Where mm. where you have uh, posh families from well to do mm. uh, situation. Did that play more of a part in this or less of a part? I, I felt it it was the aesthetics of of the film, but. Mm. The once you start chasing people, all that disappears. If you've got a gun or a crossbow, then that is mm. your upper hand. The money side of things doesn't really play into it. That the class side of things doesn't play into that. That's not what it's about. Yeah, uh, that, well, that that kind of goes back to what I was saying in the um, non-spoilery bit, which is I was kind of expecting the hunt. Because mm. that, to me, was exactly what I, what it seemed to be selling, which was like, rich people are awful. They set up a trap for human hunt, human hunting for whatever reason. In this case, it's an initiation ceremony. In another case, it's, you know, in another case, it's just because we want sport. Or in the case of, like, get out, it's because they want to, appro- you know, do cultural appropriation, really. Mm. And it's just like, all those kind of films, they all have a like slight angle on it, but it always ends up in the same way. Um, there was a there was a comment um, I heard recently about a, a genre of video game called called the roguelike um, plat- roguelike platformers, and the 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 job of the um, the the line was basically: as soon as your character gets double jump, you know they've run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> which doesn't right. seem relevant at the, at the time. But if you look at, say, Get Out, look at Saltburn, look at uh, The Hunt, look at um, Your Next, which was almost on my list of films to pick, um, Ready or Not, um, what was the other one we mentioned? White Tiger. There's the 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 double jump of these kind of eat the rich class class against class sort of like thrillers, dramas, whatever you want to call them, is always the moment when it resorts to violence. Because as soon as it resorts to violence, there's your catharsis right there. That's when you finally say, right, 
the weak person has had enough. You know, the lower class has decided to rebel. The worm has turned. Violence ensues. Yeah. Right? Now, in Saltburn, it's gradual. It's like boiling the frog. It takes its time. And everyone kind of gets off, but it gets off in a way that you, you're you kind of always sitting there going, mm, was it him or was it just their indulgence? You know, and all this kind of thing. And in the hunt, it's like the moment when the the bad guy starts shooting at her and then she turns around and she gets hold of a shotgun and blows away those people in the um in the grocery store in get out it goes right through to almost the end when he finally gets drugged and suddenly the film ramps up into an escape thing but then mm-hmm. you've only got like 10 minutes so that that's that the double jump measure has gone a long way in get out with the plot and everything sitting at the front. Salt burns the same. Right at, you know, the violence really isn't until the very end. Whereas this, this literally spends probably about five, ten minutes of these, of the opening to go, oh, aren't, it, aren't these people awful? Right, here's the violence, and we're off. And so the double jump count happens like... <laughs> literally 10 minutes in so what you're saying is this is the film yep. equivalent of michael bolton is that what you're saying yeah i wasn't going to use my michael bolton goes up to 11 has nowhere left to go but exactly you know you come down to 10 you can only come down to 10 but it is that it is that whole thing of when you have these classist things you have a point where it has to res- resort to violence or death or murder or some kind of you know catharsis and most of these films take a long ass time to get there, and the ones that don't lean into the other aspect of it is like you know the 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 rich have underestimated the the person they're up against, which has a different message, which is like the hunt or like your next you know it has that kind of ooh, hang on, we thought because we were rich, we were gonna have it easy, and we've just discovered we haven't, and the joy is in them is in the rich being on the wrong foot from the start yeah but ready or not doesn't have that mix right it doesn't show you enough as you as as who was it just said that you said that and it's like it doesn't have the mix right the the family is kind of like aren't they fucking awful and then all of a sudden it's like right they're going to kill her let's have a survival horror and it's just like, and all the pretense of, oh, it's about class, and it's about this, and privilege goes. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone immediately. As soon as they get weapons, it's gone. Mm. And it just becomes, then it just becomes the most dangerous game slash battle royale slash whatever mm-hmm. Hunger Games thing you want to throw in there. You know, it goes, if it was a video game, you'd literally go, press start. You press start, your character runs out, Goes in one room, picks up double jump. <laughs> so the <laughs> film just carries on. So, yeah. So my double jump analogy is better than the Michael Bolton one because it just literally just goes dump. Right, okay. We've we've shown you how awful these people are. Let's get rid of them. Um. So so here's my question because this leads into my actual criticism of the film. Do you think that Grace Samara Weaving? who I will say right now was the best thing in it. Yeah. Do you think that she had actual agency? Because on the cover, there she Mm. with a bandolier and the fucking elephant bullets and, you know, and the gun and the torn dress. And she looks kind of like a cross between the bride from, from kill bill and, you know, some kind of, you know, female John McClane kind of thing. You know, it's it's just like you look at her, the way the poster's laid out, the way everything's laid out, it's like she's a fucking badass and she's gonna kick these fuckers all over the place. And you're just waiting for the shoe to drop. Mm-hmm. But the film just goes, Nope, she's going to be horror standard horror film final girl for pretty much ninety percent of the movie running away and crying. Yeah. So, my question is: Do you think that she had the agency, or or was it just, or was it sort of smoke and mirrors? Because a lot of people were talking. 
I've just looked at some of the reviews. A lot of people were talking about, oh, it subverts the expectations. It does all these things. And you weren't expecting her to suddenly turn the tables on them like that. And it's like, did hmm. she? Did she really? Well, I didn't. Cause I, I thought that was the thing that I was, you get to a point that you're right, you're going to go and kick ass. And actually, it doesn't play out like that. No. And no, I, I thought that was quite a good um, in itself mm. kind of a, a subvert expectations because it mm. isn't just, yeah, suddenly I turn into a kick-ass killing machine. It's like, oh, no, these bullets are blanks. I fucked everything up. I've caught on a gate. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate that kind of, yeah, th- if this was me, this is what we want to be happening. Mm. <laughs> I'd be taking a pasting and just... Yeah, slowly going downhill and it not, everything not working out. Yeah, I like you know I like that, mm. um, but um, it's a good twist on the sort of the you know the female Ripley or final girl sort of tropes. Mm. But I think the thing is, it doesn't really give you anything else to be going on with. Yeah, if you know what I mean, that's kind of it's not quite enough because mm. you are disempowering your heroine and she's mm. not empowered mm. and it does a good job of not just having running and screaming and trying stuff but i tell you you need you, you, you gotta you took something away but you need to give something as well if you mm. know what i mean mm. um as i say i think you needed to have the the family being shown to be mm. um far you know far more despicable than they actually are Mm. And um, there's plenty of opportunity for them, you know, to try and sell each other out or, you know, you could drive wedges that way mm. between them. And there's a lot of that sort of felt a bit undercooked. Mm. Yeah. What about what about you, Dal? Do you agree with that or is there or not? Or Well, in the way I think they meant it subverts expectation is that um, – suddenly we don't have got to do a montage and mm. suddenly she goes from being um you know scared sarah connor to terminator 2 sarah connor mm. right she doesn't say suddenly gain a uh, this massive combat skill set out of fucking thin air mm. uh she's scared to begin with and she kind of remains scared through it mm. even though she knows she's got a kind of you know, fight uh, or stand her ground to survive in the end. So I think that's what they meant by subverting expectations, Mm. that she doesn't turn into Ripley or Sarah Connor. She just continues being who she is throughout the entire film. There's no massive sudden, you know, oh, you've, you've, this is one, one attempt to buy a life too much. I've now gone to a, a place where I'm in the zone and God help you all. I'm coming to kick your fucking asses. Yeah. See, the, see, the, see, cause the thing, cause well, I mean, firstly, firstly, there was moments where I was thinking, okay, she's going to, she's going to do something mm-hmm. because, you know, obviously you've had your hand blow. You've had a hole blown in your hand. You've fallen into a pit of dead goats. <laughs> You've, um, yep. you know, you've hung yourself off of a nail using your hand, mm-hmm. which, which, as soon as I saw that nail, I just like, oh, come yep. on, here we go. She's made yeah, herself. She, she didn't see that nail. <laughs> no. Thing. Although no. it's a bit like, um, you know, the, the health and safety in that house is obviously <laughs> not up to up, not to, up to scratch. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like um it's like uh has anybody seen the quiet place? Yes. It's like how the fuck did they live in that that sort of uh shed or wherever it was they was they were in and not see the giant fucking nail sticking out of the stairs? I would mm. I would just say with that one because I have I have, I have actually. He says pushing up oh, his glasses God. with his middle finger. Uh, been, been on the old movie uh, Reddit, and um, uh, been, been corrected myself for that one. Which oh, really? is, yeah. How do you knock down a nail in a world where monsters find you by just sneezing loudly? <laughs> um. Well, maybe you try and block that nail off. You try and make it so that people can see it. Um, they don't actually try and step on it. 
put a cork on it, oh. like in the olden days. Yeah, there we go. Go find some cork. <laughs> just you'd be it. But then as they do it, it'll probably squeak, and that would draw them in from three thousand miles away. Yeah. Well, I'm just yeah. gonna put this cork on top. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh shit. <laughs> you what a load of old bollocks. Um Yeah. But I was cause, you know, I think I think the problem I had with with it was that there were times when she was being threatened by someone mm-hmm. and the violence became a point where it's like it's either me or them. And at one point, she was actually in a in a room with <laughs> with with like a table full of cue balls and snooker balls and a cue and all these other things, and she's just running around going, "No, no, please, no, no, don't hurt me, no," and then trying to run away. And it's like, I don't care, I don't care who you are. Someone will go, "Oh, you fucker, grab a fucking." cue ball and throw it as hard as you can at someone but then again maybe that's the thing of the situation where like most people they're not gonna mm-hmm. you know, they just want to get out it's the fight or flight and hers is mainly flight um so she's not looking at the environment she's not doing the jackie chan thing like you would get most people in that situation being so i don't know um mm. You know, it's picking up those balls is one thing, but uses them, using them to, so uh, to crash someone's head in is another thing. Well, I'm not saying go like full fucking Ray Winston in scum and <laughs> stick them all in a sock and beat for someone to death with them. I'm talking about the fact that if that is an option, though, no, that is an option. <laughs> that is an option. I did but... think that when I saw the snooker table, it's like, can you not grab? Can you grab? Grab some of them balls. Grab seven of them. Yeah, exactly. But it's just more a case of. It's more a case of anyone, even even like the most silly person, will pick something up to throw it to deflect someone. I mean, you know, even if it's just a poxy pillow or a tin of beans or something. But you know, but then again, where is she going to carry this stuff? She had a wedding dress stuff. on. Stuff. It's just there's a bloke standing right in front of her with a fucking axe. <laughs> and these are not supernatural killers. These are just no. people that are trying to perform a ritual that they're not oh. quite. They're not ready for what well, I suppose they are ready for, but it's not happening every week, so they're not, no, not trained up and tooled or... up for this. Are no, they? it hasn't happened in 30 years or something, has it? Yeah, so but again, I have to wonder how a, an actual real person would would handle that situation. What would mm. be the um, what would be the outcome of that? Would they? try to defend themselves with the snooker balls or would they just run straight past it because they want to get the fuck out but so you're t- so so if someone so someone's throwing something at you yeah or running at you mm. and there's something anything next to you even if it's just a fucking cup you wouldn't just like throw it at them i don't know i honestly don't know how i'd react in that situation i'd probably want to just get the fuck away from them mm, okay that's fair. I mean, you know, as you you were right to say, you know, nobody knows how they're going to react in a situation like that. Yeah. But, but the problem is, I think, you know, it come the the real problem is it comes back to the the fundamental thing that it's a movie, yeah. <laughs> and and it as, is a movie, as such, yes. you are supposed to be entertained by by the movie, by characters, and in some fashion root for them. I I think it where it fell down is a lot of the times when it was one-on-one you didn't feel any danger or trepidation through the situation Mm. like with the kid Mm. when he raised the gun did you really think he was going to kill her no with the uh there wasn't there a there's the bow and arrow. You really didn't think the the arrow was going to hit her, and you had the crossbow, the long shot crossbow. Did you really think it was going to finish like that? No, it's it's all it's all fluff around everything. It, it 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 nothing had any weight to it. Yeah, there was no. I I never felt like she was in real danger. Yeah, it was fun watching her climb out the the big box in the floor with the nail mm. and the, the hole in her hand and stuff like that mm. that i think that was the most tense i ever got through it but other situations i was just like okay 
well, they've killed someone by accident and they're hiding behind this bed. Mm. Okay. What are they going to do? Mm. There's not a lot going on. Yeah. And, and this Jim, as you, as you rightly said, you know, there was kind of this whole thing that was undercooked, which was the, um, the, the sort of, how can I put it? The, 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 the split between the brothers and the family, the fact that they weren't going to be in on it. They were, they had, they were conflicted. And yet for all the conflict, you know, for all the conflict they kind of showed whenever it needed to happen, they just switched teams it was just yeah that, uh, that was that was kind of frustrating to be honest that was that was my one moment where i was just like oh come on cuz it was like we need to we need to have at least we, we need to have at least one one twist and shock so the guy so the guy threatens to kill his own mother spends spends 20 minutes of the film scratching through mahogany posts it yes. Be noted. Yeah. With a with, with, with a fucking with the tiniest bit of chain known to man, I can't even saw through mahogany with a fucking saw, let alone a chain. <laughs> and you can't even cut an half with bread. I can't. I can't. And so there's that. And then, and then he gets out and then goes and does the Indiana Jones Temple of the Doom thing, where he kind of just suddenly goes Molaram Sudaram and changes his mind. It's like. Are you kidding me? Really? What? What? We've just had like hours and hours and hours of you going, oh, I'm going to kill my mother and get her free and all this kind of thing. And then it's like, actually, nah. <laughs> I can I can get with the, the flip that he performs there because, yeah, he's against his mother all the way through up until he, she stoves her head in with a <laughs> phone. Or whatever it was. No, the actual With the box. The box itself, mm. wasn't it? Mm. And then he's like, ah, yeah, I've been talking all this, but now you've actually done it. Okay. So right. I, I can get on board with that. But you it felt like it needed a a big uh, underhand turn. And I suppose it yeah, the film was kind of waiting for that. But you're right, with with the brothers, they're like they walk into a room, they're like, Oh, I don't know what side I want to be on. Yeah. Do you want to be on that side? Don't well, what want... I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show that I'm on this side and then change. Yeah. And they did that every single time. Yeah. I, I don't I'm gonna let you go. I'm not gonna I'm not <laughs> gonna ruin it for you. I'm just gonna let you go. I'm gonna give you a to the count of ten because yeah. I've gotta be involved. Okay, fine, cool. So you're on our side. And now I'm gonna punch you in the mouth with a fucking <laughs> rifle. Oh, right, you're not. Oh, but I'm actually gonna let you get out. Oh, yeah, so you I are I was pretending last time. Yeah, and oh right, okay, so you so you're pretending last time. Oh yeah, okay, fine. Oh actually I'm not. I'm gonna kill my brother. Oh no, um no, actually I'm not. I'm gonna <laughs> it's just like fucking pick a lane. <laughs> <laughs> there's two writers and there's two directors, and I honestly think that they both had a different idea of what this film was. Because it's like the di- one director wanted it to be a comedy thriller and the other one wanted it to be an eat the rich kind of satirical piss take and the writer one wanted it to be all of the family and the other one wanted it to be some of the family yeah and it's jim just... i think you're right there are too many characters mm. Mm. and i think you need no I, I don't know maybe i'm projecting a little bit but i was going to say to have like the final the final lady the final girl the final woman Mm. At, from about 10 minutes into the movie it, it's quite a long stretch to have the final person there mm. so maybe there should have been someone else like a best friend a bridesmaid or something like that mm. to be offed a little bit earlier on yeah i mean what about the kills i mean i mean you know films like this kind of live or die on the kind of creativity of their violence as well how did you feel about those <laughs> <clears throat> well, the thing the thing is, I mean, there's a nice running joke about the uh, the co Cokey McCoke face the sister mm. accidentally keeping killing the maids. Mm. 
Yeah. And that was good. <laughs> but the trouble is, you've got, let me just count up. I mean, in the evil camp, mm. um, not in, not including the two sons, you've got one, two, three, four, you've got nine characters mm. who um, pretty much all live to the end before. <laughs> yeah. Getting the they're getting the shaft, uh, mm. no eight because the, the the evil I'm counting the evil butler there as well. Um, but he d- he gets he doesn't Who really have that bad a death. A mm. Yeah, I mean he has a car crash, but it's kind of yeah. I could have seen him throwing out the car and impaled on a tree. You know, I could have really mm. gone for a bit of that. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you kind of you need like the so these films are all about people getting the bad death. Mm. And I think my, my problem sort of with it is there isn't a, there's a lot of sort of violence and innocent maids, well, not well, not so innocent maids get killed, but the main baddies, mm. you, you have to wait right at the end. And and I, I did enjoy that, but unfortunately it's the same death again and again, mm. if you know what I mean. Once you've seen it once, mm. it, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of, eh, yeah, you know what I mean? It's not, not satisfying. Mm. It's a bit like, um, I'll tell you what it reminded me of, and I don't know if which one came <coughs> first, so I'd have to look it up. But it reminded me of the end of um, Kingsman. Where oh, yes, everyone's yeah. heads start exploding. Mm. But again, that had more more fun to it. You know, that sort of like playing the sort of 1812 overture while everyone's heads explode in time to the music. Um what about you, Dal? I mean, what did you think about the kills, the creativity of them, or even just the fact that where, where they were in the film timeline? We Well, there was one that was close to hand mm. that was totally missed. Mm. The missed opportunity by the main character, and um, it's where she's um, she gets outside, and she's running to escape the driver. He catches up, of course, and they have that bit of a tussle. And she basically, you know, lands him on his ass and then goes to get the car. Mm. I honestly thought for a minute, the way the shot was framed, that she was going to come right up to him and just run him over. Yep. But no, she didn't. No. And that's, that's, that, that kind of speaks to the problem I had with it. It's like every time you thought, all oh, right, here's where she's going to show herself as being, you know, not just the final girl of a standard horror movie. But actually, do something. Well, and then, you've got and then enough she... characters to do that as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If you've got nine, nine, ten characters, like Jim says, you know that you can easily off. Then you've got to start picking them off. You can't just have them all just suddenly, you know, it, swimming t- around all the time. Yeah, especially towards the end because it like it ha- everything happens, and it just... one downstairs trying to learn how to use a crossbow as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the useless geese are downstairs. Yeah. The, the Guillermo light, but he, he, but they all, how can I put it? I'm sure we all did this when we were much, 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 much younger in primary school. We thought up a story, we'd write a story and then you'd have nothing left to write and you had no way of writing it up and you just went, and then everyone went to bed and had a cup of tea or something like that, or the whole world exploded the end. There's nothing wrong with a style of writing. I used to do that at school all the time. So, yes. uh, you know. But you know what I mean. Try it's to just, trust it, your formula. <laughs> it's a try to trust your formula. You know, you, you've written this massive backstory. You've done all this stuff. And then all of a sudden you go, ah, I've got the school. The lesson ends in 15 seconds. And then they all made up, had friends and said, let's go all be friends and have a cup of tea and go to bed. And they did. Let's and pull it, the solution out of thin air. And, you know, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that uh, kind of finish. I mean, you know, Doctor Who's been using it for a, a while now. So, um, <laughs> exactly. well, Star Trek Voyager is basically uh, exactly. seven years of it. It's just like, yep. and then you press a button and it all gets fixed. Indeed. Um, and then they all went home and had sandwiches. And t- yeah. had some tea. Yeah. Had some tea. Yes. And... That was my really my biggest problem was it just suddenly it just suddenly went oh we've got nine characters to get rid of and five minutes left to get rid of them let's have them all die at the same time and it's like in which case what we've been watching for the last hour it's just been torture porn with a bit uh, of bit of yeah. silly run a bit of silly humor thrown in basically if she'd just stayed in the uh, the dumb waiter. 
she might have been all right just for that whole yeah sort of like day because yeah. in the end she just delayed them enough mm. so that sunlight came up you know or sunlight showed itself um and that was it mm. she just had to wait it out yeah but the but then you get the question she is married to them so she is part of the family Ah, but no, there's the get out clause at the end. She went, I want a divorce, and she took the ring off. Yeah, but she was still married to them. The divorce hadn't happened. No, it hadn't. So uh, so by dev by um, you know, old Bielzy Ah, but she she was supposed to be the sacrifice though. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, very true. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Because I thought, because so I honestly, she, she wasn't she wasn't in the firing line either. It was kind of, the deal was she gets it or they get it. Yeah. See, because I she didn't get it by dawn. They got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that that was the thing. I was kind of I was kind of hoping for something subversive like that. Like she goes all the way out. She sits down on the lawn, you know, has the cigarette, <laughs> and yeah. And then the police turn up and go, "Is everything okay?" And she goes, "Yeah, I just pop, and it just pop." You know, that would have been funny. Mm-hmm. That would Black have been out, interesting. Credits. There yeah. We go. yeah, yeah, pop. Someone going, "Jesus Christ!" And then just cutting. You know, that would have been funny. That would have been doing something, you know, that, you know. Or just, she goes in the ambulance and you just suddenly see this splash of red out of the windows. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. And the cut and the, and the, yeah. and the ambulance just wobbles down the road, and goes into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, there were so many bits like that where you just go, oh, come on. There's, there, you, you could have gone left, but you went right. And every time it did it, it's like, oh, you know, Adam Brody, he's the disillusioned brother. He's going to help her. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he. No, he isn't. Yeah, uh, we maybe can't decide will. whether yeah. he will or not yet. Yeah. Oh, he, um, he, yeah. It fulfilled its expectations then. It did subvert your expectations because you were expected to, to do this, that, and the other, and he didn't. So there we go. Well, I suppose it subverted <laughs> my expectations in that way, but I also expected it to make some modicum of fucking narrative sense. <laughs> So that did subvert my expectations. I mean, it's you know, it's fun in it's fun in a way. You just sit there and go, okay, that's quite fun. There's some humorous, you know, action, deaths, a little bit of commentary, but yeah, I just well, okay. Mm. Going on to my job, the the death Your job. in the, in the dumb waiter. <laughs> oh, here we go, <laughs> Busman's holiday. Yeah. Over to Busman's yeah. corner. I, I'm, I'm not awesome. going to get into the practicalities of no, what no, actually no, no. happened do, or, do. or what would have happened there. Do. But go for it. It was such a slow um, yarn that that happened. It was just, oh, I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> and that was it. It, it wasn't a, oh my God, this is horrific. What the hell is going on here? And her head's going to fall off. Mm. And, and a bit of comedy in that sense. Mm. It was just, no, she's been slowly crushed, but we can't see what she's been crushed by. Is it the doors just slowly closing? You know, they're not yeah. heavy doors. Yeah, did still... did the lift go down while she was still in it? We and the doors were we holding her still? Don't know. Yeah. It didn't explain it. It didn't show anything. It just showed her going, uh, something's happening uh i'm dead mm. and i i think that's a really bad thing to do you, you need oh, you need it, accuracy in your lift deaths <laughs> well look 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 at when we watch scream and the yeah. woman climbing through the cat flap as the door, the the garage is going up <laughs> the garage door is going up that's great because you can see what's happening there mm-hmm. you can see that she's going to get her head rammed in there and that's how she's going to die that's how you do these kind of slasher horror type things with blood squirting everywhere and oh my god this is going to happen but when this woman was in the lift going um i don't know what's happening and there was nothing around you couldn't see what the peril was you couldn't Mm. see what the danger was hmm yeah yeah and so with without that danger, without that peril, without that trepidation of it, or what the hell's gonna happen? How's she gonna get out of this? Mm. You need that that hint of how are you gonna get out of this? Mm. Or what would I do in this situation? Mm. And if you can't have that and put yourself in that situation, mm. then you're like, Well, do I why do I care then? 
Okay, yeah. she died. I didn't see how she died. So I can't work out how to do that if I'm in that situation. So I don't really care. Are you looking for tips, Elton? Kind of, yeah. Are, are, you, are, still, you... are you really killing people off in your lifts? Come on, be honest. No. We're all friends here. <laughs> no, let's get off. I don't want to talk about that. Let's go off that subject. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> that terrifies the crap out of me. <laughs> what, being discovered? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> standing at the bottom of a lift shaft, going, make it look like he's been pushed. I am, I am the Harold Shipman of lift engineering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we shall not say any more in case he no. ends up in court. No. Um, <laughs> will it will it cost an awful lot to put the the patio back once they've gone through it? And, you know, been looking for bodies and stuff. No, there's no patio. It's just wheels. Just yeah. wheels. <laughs> It's fine. There's there's at least three foot extra drop at the bottom of a lift shaft. You can just fill it with concrete. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of landfill around Yeldham. There is now. <laughs> there is now. <laughs> but do, do you know what I mean, though? With, with the, the peril, there, there should be some sort of peril with it. Some Something dicey. Something mm. going on. There was too many times where she would... The, um, oh, I forget her name now. Was it Grace? Grace. Yeah. Was facing someone and they like the coke head hmm. shot at her but you, you kind of knew that wasn't gonna hit her at all and you're like okay hmm. whatever and then she gets away where's the peril hmm. where's the danger to your hmm. hero yeah i i just yeah i i just found myself kind of not not worrying about the threat just just watching for the inventiveness of the story but it's just the problem was for me it was just it just didn't it just it didn't subvert it with what she was doing. It didn't tell me enough story about the ba- about the family other than they're awful, aren't they? Mm okay. And then and then the rest of it was just her running away. And it's like I've seen Halloween. I've seen these movies with people just endlessly running away. This isn't subverting expectations. This is just the end of everything else. It's just <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of everything I've ever seen. Um, but it's in the middle of this film. Mm. Well, it's at the bloody start, to be honest. Yeah. But, yeah, so I just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't really, I didn't really feel it. I just kind of sat there thinking, okay, that's that's fine, that's interesting. I, I, loved, I loved little bits, I loved little gags and little things in it, but, you know... But you know, and there was there was certain certain humorous bits with with her smacking a geezer in the head with a teapot, and <laughs> yeah, and and the old and the old the old lady kind of no, oh, the mad old aunt, and, yeah, the old aunt that yeah, just sort of watching them getting it on in the on their on their honeymoon night. It's just like <laughs> no, <laughs> you must be downstairs. She kept reminding me of um, Frau Blucher from um, mm. <laughs> from Young yeah. Frankenstein. Yes. So there was lots of there was lots of humour in it, but I just yeah, and I don't know, it just it just didn't quite land. There was too many bits where I was just sitting there going, "Oh, but you, you could have done this, you could have done that." Uh, uh. <laughs> Slight frustration, but yeah, it's fun. It was okay, but it. Yeah, but it isn't gonna. It isn't gonna be in my mind after we've done this review. <laughs> no, no. I but think. The, the moment where I think she she clops the dad around the head with the 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 storm lantern, mm. and then you have a fire, and so you have that kind of looming in the background, and then mm. the the next scene when the mum's been impaled or mum's been killed and she's on the floor mm. and the whole family's around her all of a sudden. Mm. You kind of don't know how all that family just got there, just arrived from all, all the other rooms, all at exactly the same time. Mm. But there's a fire in the other room. <laughs> and you're not going to deal with that. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. You're going to leave that. We're rich. Someone else will deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that. That's, that's for firemen. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah there's there's bits like that. I just I just wanted I just wanted more, and that's what I was saying in the spoiler free zone. I just wanted to I wanted it to be what it was selling you. It's selling us as a film where rich people 
are awful, innocent person, turns the tables on them, fucks them over. Do it in an interesting way. Take as long as you like before you get to the double jump violence. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, just take your, just, just do something with it. You're, you're telling, everyone's telling me that you're subverting expectations. But you, you're not. You're really not. You're just doing what every film does. You're just bolting them together in a slightly different way. And yeah. the writer and the two writers seem to be writing totally different films because the characters flip flop more times than the fucking flip flop shop. <laughs> <laughs> would you like a flip flop? Yes, I'd like a flip flop. Brilliant. Would you like a flip flop? Yes, I would like a flip flop. But it's only, I'm going to flip flop about my flip flop. Okay, right, fine. You get a flip flop, and you get a flip flop, and you get a flip flop. Everyone gets a flip flop. Yes, we flip flop shop. This is flip flop shop where we all flip flop in the shop or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm kind of running out of steam here. Um, does anybody have anything in a additional they wish to say? Anything they they would like to stand in defence of this movie? Or because it's not it's not an awful film. It's certainly entertaining enough, but it's just I just wanted a little bit more. I think it had potential to be be a lot more, and I mean, mm. um, sort of you know, middle of the road, um, you know. Isn't a bad place to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at the end yeah. of the day, <laughs> there's certainly worse ways of spending your time. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't find it boring, which I always find is the ultimate crime of a movie. Mm. No, it's think, never boring. And I think it's more. Uh, both times I've watched, I've enjoyed it, but when I'm sort of thinking about it afterwards, you start thinking, "Well, it could be a bit more. I could, could have gone a bit further with that," you know. Mm. Um. <clears throat> but but as it is, it 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 does land what it sets out to do. Mm. You know what I mean. And um, but you know, uh, it, it it doesn't soar to great heights. But you know, that's all. You know, nothing has to. Mm. Um, as a, a wise man once said, you know, I think it was a David Hepworth, who's very long-standing uh, pop mm. culture journalist. He mm. said the trouble with writing reviews is I realised after a while that the the accurate review for most things is mm. it's all right if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Everyone just go home. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? It. And it's true. And for yeah. a lot of things, mm. that is the most accurate review you can give. Yeah. Uh, and this, that is, fits this movie perfectly. Mm. I'd say it's an entertaining, you mm. know, no zero effort movie for a Friday or a Saturday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I think you probably play well to a, a younger, uh, less jaded slash uh, cinema literate audience. Mm. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean. Uh, and certainly, I think it, it it would it would feel a bit a bit watch my salt beforehand. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What was? Oh yeah, if we hadn't seen the others beforehand, yeah. I think they they just kind of make this kind of oh, oh this is just a bit of fluff in comparison to the, the mm. things we've watched the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's the way it goes. But you know, hmm. Okay, that's cool. Fair enough, Darren. What about you? Got anything additional you'd like to throw in there? Uh, not really. I think it's all been covered. <laughs> you know, so like I say, basically just. Just a uh, an enjoyable film. Yeah, it? nothing more, nothing less. Um, uh, yeah, pretty much middle of the road. But uh, as Jim says, you know, that's not a bad place to be. No, I wouldn't put anyone off of watching it. I just think the best way of watching this film is to be completely blind to it, even to its actual posters and its pre-sale stuff, because I think yeah. it gives you an impression. Of something that it really isn't. Yes, yeah. And that, and that, as I found, was was kind of part of the problem. You're just sitting there, kind of going, "But when's when's she gonna turn the tables on them? Why is she just constantly running away? Why is, when's she gonna hit someone? Oh, they're all still alive by the end of the film. Oh, when's she gonna? Oh, she's gonna turn the tables on them now. Oh no, they're bleeding out their mouths. Um, okay, uh, no, nothing happened, and then the devil turns up, and they all go pop. The end. Mm. It's just like, what? Uh, really? Oh, all right then. <laughs> so yeah, so I think yeah, the the whole subverting expectations hype train on this thing was probably to its detriment in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elton, any last thought? Uh, 
I think I I agree with Jim when you said the 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 end deaths were entertaining, but just to have one would have been good. But three or four, all at the same time, you're kind of bored at the end of the the fourth one, especially when the kids run around the corner. I, I'd love to have seen them kids just explode, but no, 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 you have to do it around the corner, <laughs> like the old A team helicopter trick. Oh, look, it's exploded yeah. behind the hill. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I feel a bit guilty about not feeling anything for it, but I, 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 I can't help it. If if it doesn't give me anything, then I, I, I don't know where to go with that. Fair enough. It's fair. Yeah. Like I say, we're not... We're not judging Darren for it, or we're judging, you know, anything like no, that. No, we right? just... I mean, it's, it's it's a fine enough film. It's just... Just it, it has every every mark of being better than it is. I think is the problem. Mm. But there you go. So um, I'm going to ask this question, even though I know the answer is going to be nothing unless I talk about air fryers. But if anybody else has any thoughts <laughs> in this movie <laughs> and would like to send in some feedback, then by all means, do send <coughs> it into feedback at blackdogpodcast dot com or. Um, head on over to the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the black dog podcast. Uh, uh, I, you know what? I think if uh, if you're a little bit stuck for feedback on this film, uh, you could write a small essay on how the addition of an air fryer would have made a big difference. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we'd all right. I think we'd all like to know. You know? What's this we business? <laughs> yeah, I'm removed myself from this. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that 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 word we is doing a lot of heavy lifting and and I I don't agree with it. <laughs> your your seat will not be assured on the uh, on the mothership when it turns up. <laughs> no, I will be not allowed. I will not be allowed into the air fryer stover core when I die. Yeah. Um. Oh well. Oh well. well Never I'm, mind. I can't wait for the remake of uh uh you know that 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 film with uh, Jeff Goldblum and uh, Will Smith in it about the alien invasion, where instead of a computer. Uh, you know, Independence Day. Um, but uh, it's in the pan day where instead of actually obliterating oh, them with a computer virus, they they cook them a nice breakfast. And the uh, the aliens go, oh, you know what? They're not so bad after all. Why don't we just leave? I thought you were going to say the Jeff Goldblum movie where he puts where he puts a halloumi into a tray and then also puts in uh, some, some oil. And it's called the fry. <laughs> the fry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there you go. Um. Anyway, so there you go. Yes. So if you want to talk about air fryers, by all means, fuck off. Um. <laughs> so yes. Um. That's that. So now it's time. Uh. To before we do uh my film and do the the thing. Well, it's it's time. It's time. It's time for the phrase. And I think the phrase has to be the one stop flip flop shop. <laughs> So there you go. For the one flip-flop stop flip flop needs. Yeah, there you go. For all your flip flop needs. The one stop flip flop shop. So there you go. So that's that. Um by all means have at it and leave that on the Facebook group. You know, your AI images and your pictures of air fryers with flip flops in them. You know, anything like that, I'm sure. Anyway. And uh that's that. So let's move on to my movie. So as a few people have noted, you know, we've we've talked about you know, we've done lots of films about people who are oppressed, fight against the system, who, you know, rise up against hardship when they're pressed down by and oppressed by people with privilege and power where they shouldn't have. And I thought, you know what, I've got to stick with this. I've got to stick with this theme. And as luck would have it, Amazon provided me with a two for one. Basically, on the one hand, it fulfills this this particular theme that we seem to be going through with this month. But also, settle down for a second, ladies and gentlemen. I have a story for you. Oh, God. Now, the year is 1990? 1988? Something like that. And there was a a video store called Ritz's Video in Bellingham. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking now, Richie's video. Jesus, yes. man, this is a deep cut. <laughs> just, 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 just hold fire. Now, Richie's video in Bellingham. Now, every Sunday, myself and my friend Jesse Taylor would go round there and we'd have a look in the shelves and there would be all sorts of videos, all sorts of stuff, but all the big films would be rented out. So we would watch anything, and that's how we found films like Little Shop of Horrors, for example, and, you know, various films like that. And, you know, films that, you know, would be popular later on down the road, but you wouldn't necessarily go for straight away based on the box art. Anyway, one day, sad day, Ritzy's video was bought up by Blockbusters and immediately shut down. And when it did, all the videos inside, all the X-Rental videos, which we knew because they were X-Rental tapes, VHS X-Rental tapes would be much better quality than the ones if you did buy-through, you know, the sale-through. So we went in there, and me and Jesse Taylor and another friend of ours, Colin Smith, purchased as many films as we could on the cheap, with from Ritzy's well soon to be blockbusters soon to be shut down video store most of them were shit in fact all of them were shit but you know we paid two pound for a video and you know thought we were getting a deal one video Colin Smith bought and he bought it purely for the box art and <laughs> I feel a google search coming up and <laughs> Basically, was it, was it exercise with Maria Whitaker or something like hang that? On, Is that what it hang was? Hang on, no. hang on. <laughs> and so what happened was he bought it, but then realised he couldn't bring it home because if he brought it home, he had nowhere to hide it and his mum would most likely find it. So he handed it to Jess. Now, Jess and I, we went back to Jess's house with the express intention of watching this film. However... We did not. <laughs> oh, we, God, I, got, I think I know what's coming here. We put it on a shelf. <laughs> we put it on the shelf, and it became a constant running gag because the dialogue, of the blurb on the back was appalling. The artwork on the front was appalling. The title was appalling. And it could never be as hilariously bad as we thought it would be. So... I thought to myself, you know what? One day, one day, we will see this film. And you know what? That day was 30 years ago. And we never, ever did. Things happened, things passed into time, but we never watched that video. You never re- you're not selling this, mate. You really ain't. We don't even know what it is, but you're really not selling it. <laughs> so... Imagine my surprise when recently Amazon Prime clearly bought some cheap-ass library of films <laughs> from someone at the lowest possible bidder and put it on their on their rotary line, and there it was. Were well, you there video- probably market recently, then, Lee? You know, <laughs> Amazon was. Car boot, car boot, was it? <laughs> Amazon- Is that what you were doing? Yeah. So, I, so curiosity got the better of me, and... I thought, you know what? Now is the time to pull the trigger. After 30 years to finally see this film. And the film is <laughs> Prison Ship Star Slammer. <laughs> what? Oh my god. <laughs> is this like a badly edited film of like other movies or well, something? Well, hold on. Uh, let me just read you. Um, Prison Ship Star Slammer. Prison Ship Star Slammer. Untamed, uncaged, unleashed in space. Yeah? That's Prison Ship Star Slammer. And it has... Well, I will I will read you, read you the description that was on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> the, the 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 back the 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 Amazon Prime description is 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 genius. Uh, I will uh, just recount it to you because it's only a little blurb, you know, just just to get you know, just to give you a flavour of what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> uh, and and it says, uh, it says, 
Um, it says, basically, it gives you the name of the heroine. And it says, um, for the heroine to survive, she has to survive prison wardens, mutant rodents, and lesbians. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sometime in the future, a war rages on a distant, desolate planet of Toria. A voluptuous Amazon like beauty finds herself mounting a battle against the forces of evil. Mounting? She... Freezing. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not I'm not pressing the button, I'm just going for this. When she tangles with Bantor, so, maims him. Bantor. <laughs> yeah, Bantor. <laughs> kills three of his men. Bantor, a sadistic government official, stops at nothing to bring her down and has her, sent- <laughs> yeah. and has her sentenced to hard labour aboard the prison ship Star hard. Slammer. She Slammer. is thrown behind bars with a cell block of women, each waiting to inflict a special kind of torture <laughs> upon Tora. Proving herself worthy, uh, proving herself a worthy opponent in the arena of death, Tora emerges with the respect of her fellow inmates and then leads them on to a prison break. But first, Tora must outwit sex-starved wardens, out-tough the hyper-tyrannical trusty, out, <laughs> out, out, laugh, out, out laugh the tyrannical trusty, outlive jogger rats. Astro zombies and alien monsters, and lead her small army to a space war that could either I- spell escape or her final doom. Can the beauty outwit the brawn in a lawless world of the future? Visually stunning, <laughs> <laughs> this sci fi adventure is packed with action, special effects that will keep you on the edge of your seat every riveting second of the way. It's one hell of a ride. Prison ship Star Slammer, eighty six minutes. <laughs> oh man! <sighs> so I'm going to ask the question: Has anybody <laughs> seen Prison Ship Star Slammer? <laughs> oh yeah, every weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I've even heard of this before. <laughs> you haven't even heard of it? No, no. <laughs> oh wow. This is truly, truly a a win win, Elton. No, no, don't be silly. <laughs> I have not heard of this. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I I don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, sorry, that would be a start. No, 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 I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> no, this is right. this is genuine. This is genuinely. Um, this is a death stalker two moment. This is this is. Oh. Christ. Tying up tying up lost movies of my past. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Wow. So there you go. So ladies and gentlemen, next week we will be trying to escape from prison ship Star Slammer. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And now you can understand why I said in the green room, Jim, <laughs> you yes. might need to have all sorts of excuses lined up for your significant others when they catch you watching this on a Monday night before we go and see the go and review it next week. <laughs> there you go. Oh dear. Looking forward to it. It's going to be interesting. Oh, it is. It is. It is. I, I, I don't. I don't think we'll we'll lack for things to say. That's all. I've, I've seen a few of these exploited uh, women in prison films. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there'd been a space one. Oh come on, come on, Jim. Of course, there's a space there's one. Always the a spa- there's always a space one. <laughs> It's always a space one. I'm just going to upload the poster now. I'm going to upload it to the Facebook group. You can have a sit. You can have a look. See straight away. See the magnificence that you're about to behold. It can. It can only. It can only go downhill from this poster. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just going to save those changes. There you go. Three, two, and one, and it's up. So. uh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Have fun. 
Prison Ship Star Slammer, ladies and gentlemen. It's on it's on Amazon Prime. And may God have mercy upon your souls or on my soul for inflicting it upon you. <laughs> and people like uh, uh Reverend Org can't say that he's not gonna watch it because it does have spaceships in it. <laughs> I mean the spaceship's down in the corner of that thing next to the butt next to the word that just says spigot. But <laughs> <laughs> it's on that poster. There's just one on the top behind the star as well. Oh yeah, that, uh, yeah. that is, yeah, there it is two, it? two in yeah. the poster alone. Yeah, which means even less chance of it actually being in the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so there you go. So there you go. Uh, I'll go put money on the spaceships in this will be lifted from Battle Beyond the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's stock footage from Battle Beyond the Stars. I I think Fred Olin Ray could only wish that he's got, he's going to be as good as Roger Corman. That's all I'm going to say. Ah, <laughs> oh, genius! There you go. Still a better love story than Twilight. Anyway, so that's that. Next week, Prison Ship Star Slammer. Gonna love it. Um, so you're welcome. Now let's while everyone's recovering from the shock of that um let's just uh move over to pimp's corner i'm um, <laughs> unfortunate titling now um and find out what's happening <laughs> over with hypnagoria jim um uh this week i just released um a reading of a very very scary classic ghost story the red lodge by hr wakefield and nice. this weekend there's a uh, probably going to be a yes there will be another <laughs> Chapter of Universal Horror. And <laughs> there, there might be a tribute to Brian Lumley if I don't lose my voice in between now and then. Yeah. But we'll cool. see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. One step at a time, Jim. <laughs> One foot in front of the other. Take it easy. Don't don't kill that voice. Um cool. And what about you, Elton? What's the deal with Red um with uh, Rogue Two Media? Uh, it's just myself and Andy, and we are covering the episodes on Masters of the Air. Right. So that's over at Rogue2Media.com on iTunes. And if you go to iTunes and listen to it there, give us a hand over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, one start, not enough. Castle Grace Goal. Where the fuck was Skeletor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have never flown, I've not flown a plane in action like this. So, yes. Mm. I. Yeah. Don't give me all that crap about you haven't done your research. I've watched the program. That's what we're doing. Yes. We're doing the program. Not enough Ram Man, zero stars. Jesus. Um, <laughs> it was Teela and a man at arms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what about you, Dow? Anything? Uh, No. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that, that will leave it there. Brilliant. So, ah, thank you very much for listening, everyone. Um, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Elton. You're welcome. And yes, stay safe, everyone. And, you know, I look forward to everyone joining me in once again ticking off one more historical movie in my back catalogue as we watch the classic Prison Ship Star Slammer on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Until that time, <laughs> please leave no burning shit on my doorstep. <laughs> and I'll I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Take care and we'll see you all soon. Till then, tatty bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ta da. <laughs>